how the f does this episode of Bluey exist? Like, like seriously, because in my mind, this episode should not even exist in the realm of reality. You're a horrible mother- You are wrong. What was the lesson? What the f Holy sh! They actually went that far. Baby, play fucking intense. Do your surroundings. Oh god, the last second goes to my dog. So not all of, <laughs> not all of Australia's opinions are complete garbage. <laughs> Welcome to today's broadcast, everyone. Where today we're talking about Bluey. Yeah, that Australian kids cartoon made for kids that everyone's been obsessing over lately. Yeah, we're talking about that one because, not gonna lie, I absolutely love the show to bits. It's a show that if you originally told me that a show about cartoon dogs playing games with their family would get me to feel, let's see here, uh, happy with the hearts, sadness, <laughs> shocked slash surprised, and especially anger on occasion, it's so much more within seven minute episodes I would have not only laughed at your face, but I would have told you you were stupid, and then I would have yeeted your ass out of the window. Straight up. However, I did decide to actually give the show the shot, and it's now one of my top five favorite cartoons of all time. No joke, it's that f***ing good, and I love it that much. If you still don't believe me that I love it, let's see here, let's see. We got the gigantic bluey plushies next to me. If you could not see that, I also have my at least 100 dollar bluey gnome that i bought off of a random ebay list in australia because i'm a filthy american and i even have bluey keycaps i'm gonna pop it up on screen right now but i do have bluey themed keycaps which is great so yeah but i mean i love bluey i mean i love bluey okay i love this show to bits which now that i've said this you yourself may be interested in watching the show which is great i would a thousand percent Give Bluey a shot if you have not given it a shot yet. Please watch it. It's really good. However, I'm also guessing seeing that the show has 150 episodes to its name. It can be a bit naughty to watch it. I've watched all the episodes already. And I still have a hard time sometimes forgetting which episodes I want to watch. Since there's just so many god episodes to pick from. So, to solve this conundrum, I thought of a solution. I am going to rewatch every single episode of Bluey ever made and then rank every single one on a tier list from worst to best so that way you know which episodes you can 100% watch and let's be honest you could probably just skip so yeah and by the way i did it all in the google slides presentation yeah no kidding check this out i was not joking all in the google slide presentation i'm going very fast to not spoil what's on the slides but yeah i may be a bit of a psychopath for doing this but you know what F it i did it and now i want to show showcase that to you all today. Thank god we would be here for a while, no offense. Exactly. You're welcome. But alright, with that, let's go ahead and rank 150 plus episodes of Bluey to see which episodes are good to watch. And once again, they are so f***ing bad that you probably want to just skip them at this point. With that, my name is Super, and you are watching Super Chaotic Tunes. This episode of Bluey is called Opinions. Oh yes, of course, and remember, this is just my opinion. You can have a completely different opinion, and that would be perfectly fine. Except my opinion is f***ing superior, and if you say otherwise, I'm gonna make sure you burn in hell. But that's just my opinion, of course. <laughs> but yeah, I guess with that, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? This is every Bluey episode ever, right now. Here we go. To start off our list, this is the band tier, aka the episodes that, for me personally, I wish were actually banned on Disney Plus instead of the actual episodes that were banned. There's only actually one episode in the banned tier fun fact. There's only one. And that's the worst episode of Bluey ever made in my opinion. And that episode is... Charades. Charades is the worst episode of Blue Fui ever made and I absolutely despise this episode to bits because let me tell you why out of all the episodes of the show 
which are usually great, by the way. This is the one that reminded me the most, and this is going to shock you with this comparison, of Caillou. And that's not a good thing, because I f***ing hate Caillou. And this episode feels like a Caillou episode, and that's why I hate it. Because, hear me out with this. You know what, I'm going to switch to the blue screen. You like this? I, I created the blue screen just so when I want to add footage, I can add footage in post. This, at the beginning of this episode, it's actually perfectly fine. It's a nice little blue episode, it feels like a blue episode, nothing out of the ordinary starts. And then the game of straight starts, and let me tell you, when the charade starts, it's like, it's like a waterfall. The beginning of the episode is perfectly fine, but then as soon as charade starts, you go down hard to the deep depths down below. Oh my god, there's so much to pick apart for this one. First off, Muffin. Listen, I am usually a Muffin fan. I love Muffin. But what the f*** was Muffin in this episode? Usually with Muffin, he's funny. This just made me want to rip my hair out. Why is Muffin being such a little bitch for no reason? And you know, maybe it would have been perfectly fine if the Nana was all like, Hey, Muffin, stop being a little bitchy. But no, the Nana decides, you know what? F*** it. Let's do everything Muffin wants for no particular reason. What? Why are you doing that? Why are you just laying this? Why are you doing everything the three-year-old wants? Why? And the worst f***ing part about all this is that the lesson, apparently, for this episode that makes me question everything and what the writers for this episode were on while writing this was, hey, the little one gets what they want because at Nana House, everyone gets what they want. Ex Excuse me? That is a horrible lesson to teach your kid and the kids watching this show. Like, I don't want to be a Karen, but what is that lesson? That is a horrible lesson. Like, listen, even I, growing up, had difficulties kind of like embracing the fact like, hey, you know, you don't always get you what you want, but that's fine. But this episode makes it seem like that should be the norm. What the f***? And not only that, I'm pretty sure some kids are literally going to take that seriously. And then when they go to their Nana's house, and then the Nana will most likely not do everything that they want. The Nana's going to be pissed because they're like, oh, what are you doing? And then the kids are going to be like, well, what the f*** will it lie to me? And it's just a downward spiral of this hatred that I it boils my body and it makes me want to punch a hole in the wall. It's that bad. The Raids is the worst episode of the entire show and I wish this was the episode that was banned and not. Not the... That, what's the episode called again? There's so many episodes that I sometimes just forget the name of them. The episode where Bandit gives birth. That's the one I'm talking about. I wish that episode wasn't banned, and this was the episode that was banned instead. And with that, we can move on to the somewhat decent episodes of Bully. Oh, but, 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 hold up. I need to stop past me right there because I need to explain something real quick before we continue. But I don't really feel like doing it in voiceover, so... Hello. I hope we're staying hydrated and doing fantastic. It's nice to meet you. My name is Netflix Adaptation Super or Video Editing Super or however you want to call me. And throughout this entire thing, I'm going to be popping in from time to time just to give some like general updates on some opinions that may have changed. Point out some stuff that I only realized when video editing that I want to point it out now. And to give some updates on some of my opinions because after God knows how long it took to video edit this, some of my opinions have actually changed. And I want to mention that, and I wanted to explain that just to, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> God, I am so unprofessional with this. Holy. Because unlike the plush bear version of me, I actually kind of care a lot more about what I say on the internet. Which, yes, I know. This shirt is ironic in that case. But we're gonna, let's go ahead and start off with the first thing I wanted to point out. Was that if you did not know, this was back recorded in like January, March. I forget the exact date I started recording this series. But it was before Ghost Basket, The Sign, and Surprise was released. So unfortunately because of that, those three episodes are not on the tier list at all. I just wanted to go ahead and say that 
in case you were wondering why they weren't on the tier list at all. But if you are curious as to where I would have put them, I probably would have put Ghost Bats getting in like high B tier, low A tier potentially. The sign, obviously, in S tier. I mean, that's obvious. Though at the same time, it feels kind of unfair to put it in S tier because it's not really a regular episode of Bluey. It's more of a TV special, in my opinion. But regardless, it's one of the best episodes of Bluey ever made. And of course, it's going to go to S tier because of that. And then, surprise, I'm actually mixed on. I know it's definitely going into A tier. I know that. Though I might put it in S tier. I, I, I don't know for fully for sure, honestly. I think I need to let it sit for me for a couple of months first before I give my general judgment. Or who knows, if I ever do this again in the future, you'll probably see my actual opinion on surprise. And there you go. Oh yeah, and just to make sure, <laughs> the reason I am censoring all the swears, even though I don't usually censor swears in my videos, the only reason why is because after editing this for God knows how long, and for this stream, video, whatever you want to be, being God knows how long, I want to make sure this video is monetized bullets. And I want to make sure I get the most <laughs> amount of bonds that as says, okay, I'm not saying I'm like bunny hungry or anything, but after working on this for so long, you know, I want to make sure I get my bank for my buck. But with that though, let's go ahead and continue on with the top 150. And with that, we can move on to the somewhat decent episodes of Bully. Or actually, there's actually one more before we move on to the top 150. Oh, actually we are moving it on, but okay, hang on, let me restart. <laughs> Yeah, this is the problem with live streaming because you can't exactly just cut it between. You kind of just have to roll with it and just hope and post it doesn't look too bad. But hey, now that we got the worst episode of Bluey out of the way, let's now focus on the top 150 episodes of Bluey. Starting now with D tier. Yeah, I know, there's a D tier for Bluey. Shocking, right? And shockingly, there's actually only one episode I have in D tier. And this one is probably going to shock a lot of you and raise some eyebrows. Do you know what that episode is in D tier? That one episode? It's stunning. I know. I probably just raised a lot of eyebrows. <laughs> like, hi, Dunny. Dunny? It's perfectly fine. Why would you rank this one so low? Well, let me tell you why. It's because this episode is f***ing boring. <laughs> like, out of all the episodes that I've watched with Bluey, I feel nothing. Like, that's right. I never laughed. I never cried. I never felt anger. I was never surprised. I felt nothing. I was a blank slate watching this episode. And that, to me, feels like a waste of time. And I don't know about you guys, but for me personally, when I watch a TV show, especially Bluey, I usually watch it to escape reality, right? However, if I'm just like, you know, just sitting there and not really, you know, like having a good time or not really just like feeling the most thing, I feel like I'm just wasting time. And this episode just feels like a blank slate and it's so boring that at this point, like, it's not offensive or anything, but kind of makes me mad that I don't feel anything, that it just feels like a waste of my time. That when compared to, like, even the episodes I would consider as bad, at least with those, I felt something. But this, I felt nothing. And for that reason alone, it gets into D tier. Because while it's not necessarily bad, it is so boring. And if you told me what episode this was, I would have completely forgotten this episode existed. And plus, Funny because haha, D for Dunny and D tier, haha, I know, I'm so f funny. Alright, we are now moving on to the 16 C tier episode. That, yeah, I know, only 16 in C tier. Trust me, I kind of had a hard time ranking these sometimes kind of low because there's just that many good episodes of Bluey. It is what it is, right? I'm just glad that just means there's that many good episodes of Bluey, you know? Let's go ahead and move on to the 16 C tiers. I would number 149, Butterflies. <laughs> oh boy, Butterflies. How does this one make the blood boil for some people? <laughs> Specifically for Juno here in particular. Everyone loves Juno, right? Everyone loves this episode. Not. Oh man, where do I even begin with this episode? <laughs> First off, look. I get what this episode they want to, you know, sometimes with some characters in the movie be kind of accurate to real life. With having, you know, sometimes the kids be kind of a bit of a And I get that. I get that from a writing standpoint. But as an enjoyment standpoint, from a viewer standpoint, I f***ing hated it. And this is going to become a recurring theme throughout this entire stream slash video. That I hate when episodes of a TV show make characters be to each other for no reason. I hate that 
to a T. And this episode is a prime example of this. Not only is obviously Juno being a dick by, you know, leaving Bingo behind. And then, you know, when Bluey is like, hey, maybe let's go back to, you know, make sure Blue think it's okay. Juno just ignores Bingo's ass and just does nothing. But then, you know, Bluey is kind of a dick unintentionally for leaving Bingo behind. <laughs> For no reason, just because Juno wants to. And then Bingo's kind of like <laughs> for Okay, okay. Bingo's case I could understand because they're upset. But unintentionally, Bingo's kind of a <laughs> for you know leaving Bluey in the dust and not saying anything, and then Bluey becoming upset because of it. And then at the very end, every single <laughs> character is then a it's a bandit! Really need his time with the laundry! Oh my god! Please burn in hell all of you! And I don't know about you guys, but for me, that doesn't make it up to the enjoyable experience. If anything, it just makes me hate life. I don't like this episode. Trust me, Juno has better episodes later on, which we'll be talking about, but this episode was not the greatest spotlight for Juno, to say the least. The next episode I absolutely despise that I don't think gets enough attention is Spy Game. I also hate this episode to a T because it feels like everyone is an asshole to each other for no reason. Because you know, hey, eventually I was like, okay, the playing a game, but whatever. And then I kind of realized, wait, there was a lot of wrong with this episode <laughs> because Hear me out on this, okay? Hear me out on this. When it comes to Bluey, right? Bluey, for no reason in this episode in particular, is a much bigger dick to Bingo than ever before. Why is Bingo being a dick to Bingo for no reason? And why are the other kids in this episode being a dick as well? I don't get that. Why? And then, you know, this just feels like an episode of Bingo being bullied as well, with, you know, them constantly, well, I constantly, I've been Bluey yelling at Bingo. It's not really a fun time. It feels like, in a way, Bluey beat a to Bingo. It's just the writers doing so just to add conflict and is doing so for no particular reason. And then when Bandit, you know, was trying to teach a valuable life lesson to Bluey, as funny as it was initially, now rewatching it, it's like, wow, okay, so they basically just did waste a valuable life lesson for a gag. Okay, f us, I guess. And then, you know, it's just magically resolved with Bluey deciding, hey, you know what, Bingo, let's, you know, do what you want. I'm sorry for being a for no reason. Yeah. And then, you know, with the <laughs> readers catching on fire, you know, it's it's not a good time, man. I, it, it, this episode just makes me angry and I and I don't like it. I, I feel physical anger when watching this. Not as much as Butterflies, but enough to rank it this low. It would be the fourth worst episode of the show. But speaking of the fifth worst episode, of the entire show? Wild Girls. Now this could be due to recency bias. It honestly could be. But Jesus Christ, what the f was this episode? Let's see, let's, let's, let's go over all this. Let's go over Wild Girls. With Wild Girls, right? Coco is such an asshole for no reason. And you know, with the game, it's like, oh cool, you know, maybe they want to try something new with Nina Farms and stuff. And then Coco's like, no p we must play Wild Girls no matter what. And if you think otherwise, you are wrong. Jesus Christ. Coco, calm the f*** down. We can compromise. And even when, you know, I forget their name. But when she's trying to be decent, trying to be a decent person, Coco's just being a d straight back. And then, you know, when she decides, you know what, you're being kind of a d Let me move away from you to join these guys over here. Coco, Coco f***ing howling like a little d <laughs> oh my god, it's, just, it's like there's so much going on. The only stuff that someone saved this episode is Koki the cocaine. <laughs> what? Coco deciding, you know what? I'll play along. He's just standing there. Menacing! And then we can live in harmony and work together to make both games combined together. It's the only saving grace of this episode. But other than that, I absolutely despise this episode. And I really hope that... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just... I swear, with these bad episodes, I'm going to be losing my marbles sometimes and just go on rants that I... Yeah, cocaine, apparently! With that, let's move on 
to the sixth worst episode of the entire series. Hansen. Oh my god, Hansen. This episode, man. Honestly, I don't know if I would consider just them being this episode. This episode just made me feel bad for Bingo. Like, genuinely. It's Bingo's birthday, you know, the, probably one of the happiest days of your life, and you try to do a handstand, you know, because fucking why not? And then, you know, everyone is just, you know, ignoring you throughout all of it. Like, honestly, why did, in this entire episode, everyone was just ignoring Bingo for no reason? It felt so mean for just the sake of being mean for no reason. Especially on, like, Bingo's birthday, for that matter. Like, Mickey, Bingo feel like she can't be singing at all. That's kind of a move, unintentionally. But also, kind of sad in Bingo's game. This just made me feel sad more than anything. And not the good kind of sad that makes me go, Oh my god, this episode's so good! I'm tearing my eyes out! More of, oh my god, I feel so bad for Bingo. Please, save her from this house game that is their birthday. And the only saving grace part of this episode was okay on the rock this moment was kind of nice you know the data you know being nice to bingo and all of them wanting to pay attention to feel useful that was kind of nice and then immediately after the, the kids and parents are like wait where the f is bingo where did bingo go and i'm like dude made me play intensive to your surroundings like oh my god what the hell the only saving grace part of this episode again is this part because it's very sweet. Other than that, hate this episode a bit. Moving on. Hey, it's me again. Hope you didn't miss me too much. With this episode in particular, I only just realized this in video editing. Why are Bluey's friend at Bingo's birthday party? Because it would be one thing if it was like a mix of like Bluey and Bingo's friends at the birthday party. Because maybe Bluey was able to invite some of her friends and Bingo was able to invite some of her friends. So let's you run your birthday however you want. You do you. I don't care. But isn't it kind of weird that for Bingo's birthday party, almost like all of the friends besides for maybe like one or two of bingo's friends the rest of the friends at the birthday party are blueies like either bluey does not have that many friends or something else is going on here because you can clearly tell like bingo's classroom is huge and i'm pretty sure bingo was friends with a lot of those kids probably right so why are like almost none of them at the party and only specifically bluey's friends are at bingo's birthday party like it just makes no sense right like like seriously i don't get why little studios did that why did you do that i don't understand but yeah that was something i noticed while video editing this that i just really wanted to point out because i think it's a very weird mistake adding along to the weird chaotic meanness of bingo's birthday in this episode and honestly knowing this information i think i'm gonna lower my ranking of this episode much lower on a redo because yeah even on rewatch still it does not get any bigger i still kind of hate this episode hell it might even go into d tier i don't know we'll have to wait and see in the future <laughs> but there you go there's your general update on this one and let's go ahead and continue with number 145 to the seventh first episode of the entire series. Obstacle course. Oh man, obstacle course. Well oh, man, let me tell you. Obstacle course, man. What the f happened to Bandit? Bandit here doesn't feel like Bandit. The Bandit I know is usually sweet. He's kind. And he wants to play with his kids nicely. And then in this episode, he's like, You know what, f***ing? You're f***ing secret for not wanting to run with me? And I'm gonna make sure you f***ing pay for that. And you know, maybe the episode would have had some saving grace if, you know, Bluey won. And then, you know, all the training that Bluey did would have been great. And then in this f***ing episode, Ben is like, You know what? That is it. I went and said, and then everyone everyone including the audience is like why the f did you do that why did you do that you asshole and then you know it coming out with the end with louis you know louis over here it's like you know what let's play a game of memory swap you son of a and then bad it's like ah oh, shit she got me that's the only kind of funny part of this episode other than that this episode sucks just straight up it just sucks oh well Moving on. Who's my favorite Bluey character? Oh man, that's so toughy. Honestly, on the wrong way, it might be Bandit. I love Bandit so much. And also Jack. We stand Jack in this house. 
The next worst episode I hate is teasing. And this is going to become a recurring thing with some of these episodes. Is that I hate when they show the worst parts of the family for no reason. I'm not saying like showing like the difficult parts of basically the family and you know all that. It's inherently a bad thing. Like that could showcase a cool thing. But with this episode, it just felt like it was just a back and forth of like, Hey, you did this. You did this. You did this. You did this. So both of you are assholes. Yeah, it just kind of felt like that for me. And at some point, it kind of just made me go, okay, why are we just showing Bandit being a dick for no reason? I'm not having a good time here at all. It's this just episode in particular just did not click for me. Although, clearly, for some people, it did because Nico likes it. So, hey, the good to see me thing. I don't know. Alright, moving on to the next worst episode, Promises. Similar to teasing, it kind of just felt like a back and forth, a back and forth of the family being a d to each other, or pointing out the flaws in each other for no reason. And for me personally, that doesn't make an episode fun to watch. If anything, it just makes me wish I was not here right now. And ironically, this dog right here, kind of a d Not on the fault of the show or anything, obviously. I get why they did it, but for me personally, it Maybe one of them. Maybe just steal it myself and then give it to Bluey. Sometimes it felt like that. And yeah, out of all the episodes on this is one of the few I have the least to talk about, so we're gonna move on. The next was okay, fine, we can move back to teasing. By the way, I hate this episode. <laughs> The next worst episode, Family Meeting. I mean, do I really have to say why I don't like this episode? Do I really have to say why? I feel like it's kind of obvious why I don't like this one. I mean, first of all, poop and fart jokes are not my cup of tea personally, but if done right, can be funny. But in here, the only real funny part was this. Other than that, it was just kind of meh. But then the sh** they pulled at the end was such bullshit. Family Baby just felt so mean-spirited for no reason. It was just like, hey, you did this, what the f And then it turns out, hey, you did this, what the f I don't know, for this one in particular for me, it just did not click compared to some of the other episodes on this list. And I wish instead we got a more properly written episode that with the Ace Attorney like style court session in mind and not be something like a bitch. <laughs> and it not be like this. The next episode that I personally don't really like is work. The only thing I really liked about this episode was the dance sequence here because it had pretty animation. It was pretty cool. Other than that, why was Bluey such a to bandit? Bluey in particular, like, was being Okay, okay, let's go over this episode bit by bit. In this, like, little play game they're doing, Bandit is like, hey, let me give you a job. And Bluey and Bingo is like, oh, sorry, Bingo the Riff. The proc. It's like, oh hey, cool, let's get to work. And then as soon as, you know, Bandit's gone, Bluey's like, hey, I'm not gonna work. And then, you know, the episode plays out, nothing much, you know, going on. And then, you know, <laughs> oh my god, this episode. And then, you know, when he comes back the second time, it sees Bluey in this chair. Bandit rightfully so is like, hey, what the hell? What are you doing in my chair? It's like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm the boss now. It's changing the rules completely. Which to me, it was like, uh, okay, sure, I guess. And then, you know, sometimes with Bandit, you know, it feels like he goes along with the game too much, which, you know, good method and acting. But sometimes there's a point you just gotta stop the game and realize, wait, my kid is being kind of a Maybe I should, you know, let them do this to me. And then, you know, like, break, kick me out of my own house just for the sake of the game. Maybe don't do that. And yeah, just this episode in particular just did not hit well for me. This episode in particular just made me want to, it made me want to become the boss of this company and just fire Bluey and rehire Bandit. That's all it did for me. Other than that, and besides the nice little animation here, I don't really like the episode that much. Next up, the episodes I kind of hate, The Claw. Okay, I feel like this one in particular is gonna make some people pissed that I ranked it this low. But again, hear me out. Honestly, this was one of my favorite episodes of the show, unironically. But then I kind of thought about Spore and I realized, oh wait, there's kind of a lot of like rock with this one now thinking about it. But so let me explain. With The Claw, right? You know, originally at the beginning, it's like, okay, it's a nice blue episode, whatever. And then the stuff with Bandit comes along. But Pin becoming the claw machine, and it just feels like mean-spirited. Because you know, it's then like, hey, do chores around the house to win the toys that you own, that you know, we bought for you in particular, and why you played up in the claw machine when we own the toys? 
when we own the f***ing toy? Jesus. Okay, but whatever. And then, you know, Philip pulls the bullshit. The mystery extra bonus prize of getting ice cream. It's like, you know what? If you really want it, give the toy that you just won that you own already and put it back in here. And it's like, okay, but what the f***? Why are you doing that? And then, you know, the episode continues to play out and then he malfunction for no reason and tries to turn it into a lesson? Like, really? Really? Then Bluey and Bingo decide, you know what, we had enough of your s***, let's attack you. And they do, and it's actually kind of nice. Okay, at that point, the episode kind of just returns to normal, like, okay, this is a fine episode to Bluey. But during that middle section, holy s***, I was, I was ready to punch Stan in the face, straight up. And then pulling the full s*** of the episode, be like, you know, the episode I learned today is that these kids are awesome. It's like, okay, shut the f*** up, that's such a cop, that's such a cop. <laughs> and so yeah, for me personally, this, once I really thought about this episode, I started to kind of hate it. But other than that, this episode's fine, it's whatever. It is what it is. But hey, this is what it is. Let's move on to Burger Shop. Again, this episode will probably raise a lot of questions why I don't like it. But let me tell you why. In this instance, I get what Bandit is doing in this one. You know, trying to teach the kids the responsibility of taking care of themselves. But like Tilly points out in this episode, they're f***ing five and seven for this one. Or at least that's what I believe their age is during this episode. Why are you teaching them that at such a young age? I don't get that. And then obviously what, you know, the kids are like you know what we're just gonna continue playing you know because we're kids <laughs> oh my god this episode made me lost my mind bandit is all like oh well you know maybe you really should you know get out of the tub and the kids are like no because they're kids and they don't know what they're doing to the point of freezing it's to the point where and somehow bandit gets in the tub somehow like how did this how did it go this far yeah that was a bad move for kids so thank you even silly it's like what the f what are you doing? Like, why are you doing this, Bosman? And yeah, just this episode, it felt off compared to some of the other episodes. I'm seeing a power whip C tier, being that bandit being a <laughs> in a lot of sense. Well, maybe not a <laughs> but it's something that just the episodes just feeling off, like this one. That's the real thing with C tier. That's the whole reason why. Hey, time for a little update. I just wanted to go ahead and clarify this because I think I'm kind of like over dramatic sizing the, the C tiers in this tier list. Like, let me make it clear right now. I don't actually like hate or despise the C tiers, all right? Well, at least not so much as like I'm making it seem like in the actual video. I'm just, you know, being all dramatic, you know, for comedic effect, you know, I'm, I'm just putting on a show, man. I'm just putting on a show. Let me put on the show. But yeah, for real, I don't actually like hate the episodes. I'm just being over dramatic for the funny. And if I'm being honest, all the C tier episodes are just completely fine. I'm just making the problems I have with the C tiers a much bigger deal than they actually are for comedic effect. And yeah, I don't actually hate the C tiers. I'm just being dramatic for the funny. That's all. But right, with that, let's go ahead and continue on with the video. But speaking of C tier episodes, Swave School. Oh man, I hate Swave School. <laughs> okay, if I'm being honest, if this is one of your favorite episodes, I can see why. This episode particular for me, it just did not land, if I'm being honest. That's why. Swim School just felt like Louie got an excuse to be a carrot for no reason. <laughs> and then the parents are going along good because it's play, but like, oh my god. <laughs> like, honestly. Even though I've watched this episode multiple times, I still don't know the lesson that was being taught here. Like, what the f*** was the lesson in this episode? Because if there was a lesson, I completely missed it. What was the lesson here? Yeah, just honestly, just skip this episode. Straight up, lesson is to fail to see your favorite teacher. Apparently! Yeah, if that's the lesson, maybe, you know, this episode should probably take a few more drafts in the writing department. Other than that, it's just not that good compared to some other episodes, and you could probably just skip it and be perfectly fine. Speaking of episodes you could skip... WHAT?! Okay, okay, I know I'm going to get some black for this one. But honestly, I don't really like Hammerbart all that 
Come on. Yes, I know I have the bluey gnome with me, but that does not mean I dislike Hammer Barn. As an episode, at least. Like, I can get why some people like Hammer Barn. I can get why some people like it. But for me, this episode just did not hit. Because, you know, again, bluey and bingo just kind of being annoying for no reason. With, you know, the back and forth of like, hey, why does bingo have this and I don't? Hey, why does bluey have this and I don't? You know, just that back and forth was annoying. And then, you know, the actual so probably one of the funniest fights that I do unintentionally kind of so cool. This is what happens, you know, when you are ungrateful for something. Somebody hugs me, yes! <laughs> probably one of the few things I actually like about this episode because it was actually a pretty funny line. Not gonna lie. And then the whole thing, you know, with Jilly trying to teach him lessons to Bluey Bingo, and then to see the entire freaking like color picking thing that's apparently for free, and then you know, just it feels like that lesson is just thrown out the window. Huh? What do you mean? Oh my god. And yeah, just Hammer Barn could have been a lot better written, if I'm being honest. Though honestly, it could just be a me thing. I can see why some people would like this episode, especially since it's a representation of Australia. I totally get it. But yeah, this out of all the episodes, you could move on from this episode. It'd be perfectly fine. Or if you like it, hey, more power to you. Moving on to the next episode, hairdressers. Oh man, hairdressers. Here's a fun fact for you. This episode is not called hairdressers. It's called Bandit Gets Tortured for Seven Minutes Straight. Cause that's what this episode is. This is just Bandit being tortured for no reason. Like, I don't even remember like pretty much the lesson or anything else for this episode. I just remember Bandit being tortured. That's what I remember and came out of this episode. Everything else was completely wiped from my memory. Like seriously. How did we get from Bandit being here? Is it Bandit being like this? Looking like he just smoked a bunch of cocaine? This is what I do remember at all. Exactly, it's also forgettable. Unless you remember Bandit being tortured, like I do. Other than that, I mean, this episode is fine. Like, I will admit sometimes the parts where Bandit is tortured is kind of funny. But for the most part, I just felt bad for Bandit. <laughs> Like, this episode just felt like it exceeds to torture and hurt band in any possible way for no reason. And yeah, obviously I don't like my bully episodes with band being tortured, so we're moving on. Circus. Oh my god, Circus. If you do not remember this episode, how? Are you sure you don't remember it? Because I definitely remember this little s*** right here. No, not Circus ain't <laughs> Yeah, like, honestly, most of this episode is not bad, right? Like, most of this episode is perfectly fine. And then the f***ing, like, Winton's... That's his name, right? Winton's bro big brother comes along, and it just makes me want to rip my hair out. Although, I will say, there is some saving grace this episode with the parts that, you know, don't involve Winton's whole brother. Most parts are nice. And then, you know, Winton's brother saying, Hey, you know what? Fine. I'll play along with you guys. And them standing up to it is kind of nice. I will admit, it is kind of nice. Other than that, though, this episode is kind of just meh. Like all of the other episodes, this one's kind of just meh. But hey, that's perfectly fine. Sometimes you need those fan episodes so those good episodes can stand out. You sometimes need that. And finally, we are here at Horsey Ride. Honestly, if you told me that this is one of your favorites, I wouldn't believe you because honestly, this episode is pretty funny. However, this episode has two big issues that I have a huge problem with that I'm gonna get into right now. For some context, right? Originally, with this episode, I thought it was perfectly fine how it is. But then, you know, after rewatching it and when I was starting to like binge it, when binging it, I also watched the pilot episode, The Weekend, which is great, by the way. I'm gonna be talking about that later. But with something particular, with the weekend, it kind of felt like Bandit was... <laughs> How do I put this? In the weekend, right? Bandit's so sweet and kind and nice. You know, Bandit is a sweetheart and wants to apologize. Make mental note of that. He does apologize for being a wet. Also, he shouldn't have to apologize for that episode, but he did, and it was nice, and I appreciated it in the pilot. But I'm f***ing horsey, right? You know, a couple episodes later, Blue is like, hey, you're the reason, you know, my stuffed toy is, you know, stuck with socks, and you won't let go. It's because you played with me when you were trying to originally blame me. Then it is dead, all right, instead of apologizing. Oh, well, you know, we can't play the blame game now. And it just makes my Karen raise my finger and go, Whoa! 
Hold up one second. Why the f are you now deciding to not apologize when you're being called out for something worse than the weekend? By the way, like what the f that's bullshit. Well, there's no use to play the play game my ass. A can apologize to your daughter. And then, you know, it's not even like Bandit that, that causes the resolution in the end. It's Stripes. Stripes is the one, you know, like that saves the day unironically. Not even Bandit who caused the situation to happen in the first place. Bruh, what the fuck? And so, yeah. Other than that, the episode's pretty funny and I like it. But with those two big problems in mind, yeah, Horsey Ride is kind of not that good. Kind of meh. With that, it's time to take a water break. Stay hydrated. Because hey, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need a bunch of water breaks throughout this entire stream. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take one right now. Thank you very much. There we go. With that, move on to the 72 B tier. Yes, seven B tiers. That many because there's just honestly that many good episodes of Bluey. B tier is what I consider to be good episodes. There's a lot of good episodes of Bluey. I'll be for it. I don't care. Let's go ahead and start with the 33 low tier. Low tier. The bleh. Let's go ahead and start with the 33 low B tier. Trust me, you're gonna want me to split this up into low, B, and high. Just trust me, you want me to do this. With that, let's continue. So with the 33 low B tiers, starting with early baby. Honestly, there's nothing fear wrong with this episode, but to me, this episode was kind of just boring. Like for me, it didn't really just like stick out or and for me, it didn't really do anything to like make me laugh or smile or, you know, anything. It didn't really feel much. It kind of made me tired more than anything, unironically. Except for this part here. This part was pretty funny. Other than that, it's kind of just banned. There's not really much substance to it. Next up, Hotel. With Hotel, it's fine for what it is. It's nice. But again, it does sometimes kind of feel like Bluey. Just kind of the bingo for no reason. But other than that, the jokes were solid and it was pretty funny, so... Yeah. yeah, expect me to kind of like skip over some of the B tiers because there's not much I can say about them. Okay, Tickle Crafts. Other than this scene here, which is probably unironically one of the funniest parts of the entire show for me, Louis <laughs> Pickles be like, Why do you never play with. <laughs> Why do you never play with us? You're a horrible dad. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, listen here. That was probably one of the like very funny part of the entire episode. The rest of the episode is kind of meh. And honestly, I don't really remember it that much compared to some of the efforts. So yeah, other than this scene right here, it's kind of just meh. Chest. Oh man, chest. This was an interesting one. Honestly, again, nothing bad with this episode initially. It's kind of just like, a wise bandit, why are you teaching chess to a seven-year-old and a five-year-old, huh? And again, it also kind of felt mean-spirited because it kind of just felt like trying to make it seem like Louis Bingo or Dub or at least Bandit was trying to make, make it seem so. But, you know, even like Chili's like, oh god, what is my husband doing? There wasn't really that many like funny jokes or funny moments. So, yeah. This episode just, it just didn't really hit for me. <laughs> Library, okay. Before the Muffin haters come in chat and bash Muffin, hear me out. <laughs> Muffin in this episode is actually kind of funny. You know, they have some funny moments, which is probably one of the few saving graces with this episode. And I'm glad that, you know, they did resolve the message here that initially came like, hey, you're the most specialist person in the world. You know, that being fixed, I'm glad for it. You know, it's a fine episode. Of that but jesus christ when muffin was like annoying them throughout man it was sometimes hard to watch but other than that it's fine it's fine for what it is kids oh man kids this is one field that i i sometimes question bandit's parenting dude i get it you want to play games with your kids trust me i get it but there is moments you know when maybe you maybe you say you play with your kids like in a public setting like this especially in a grocery store like this for christ <laughs> i hate this <laughs> I'm not the only one! It, again, it just feels kind of mean spirited for no reason. But at least it teaches a nice lesson of hey, maybe you shouldn't take favorites with your kid. And you know, they hug it out, it's nice, you know, it's whatever. And when, other than that, it's fine. It's a fine episode. There's worse episodes, obviously. 
next up, Sheepdog. I'll say if someone said this was their favorite, I could get it. Like, especially for the bombs, I could get why they do like this episode. But for me personally, it just did not hit. Like, I do like the scenes where the buffers is like, hey, I just need a break. And then Bluey understanding that and willing to, you know, accept that, like, hey, it wasn't her fault. She just sometimes, sometimes parents just see 20 minutes, and ironically. And then, you know, even like Wendy, you know, who is usually kind of a coming around and, you know, wanting to help. It's nice. And I appreciate that. But also, Jesus Christ, camp. Can't it. What? Man, it calmed down with the sheep attitude. Jesus Christ. Christ, you can drop the act. You can drop the sheep act. You can calm down now. Jesus. What has happened at the bottom left one? Don't question. Just watch the episode and you'll understand. Hey, time for a little clarification. I want to pop in and say real quick that past me was actually wrong. I don't usually think Wendy is a d I don't know where that even came from, to be honest. I think I was just hating that Wendy for no reason here. But like, I don't even know why. I think Wendy's cool. Like, why did I hate on her so much past me? Why did you do that? What the f***? I think what I was trying to apply was that with Wendy, we didn't really get to see much of her in the show, and we didn't get to really see the good side of her. She was just really more used as like a comedic character for comedic effect. As you know, like an opposite to like Bandit, Bandit Chili, and the others in the healer family. I think that's what I was trying to explain. Not trying to say that Wendy was an asshole. <laughs> but with that clarification, let's continue on with the video. Okay, next up is Typewriter. Honestly, it could just be me being with the episode, but for me, personally, I just didn't really like it that much, and I found it to be kind of boring. For me, it is kind of boring compared to some of the other episodes on this list, and it's an episode I can probably just skip and be perfectly fine with. But honestly, if you do like this episode, more power to you. I can see why some people do like it, because it does have some pretty funny moments, and it does have some nice, like, action sequences, honestly, when they're playing along. Although, also, why? Why did, you know, the teacher take the typewriter away and then hit it under their chair? Why did that happen? I mean, I feel like I get why, but like, but why? <laughs> you know, why did they do that? I don't get that. Hey, it is what it is. Moving on. The stories. Okay. Before I say anything, I want to get one thing out of the way. I do love the animation in this episode. I love the creativity with, with the way they told the story. And see the cool little animated bits they did. Like see the whole like rainbow coming out of Winston's fist or Winston turning to a car or somehow the horse talking out of nowhere. Or even like you know, the end credits, you know, be broken by Winston. Like there's a lot of cool animated moments in this episode. But that is also mixed with a bunch of what the f moments that make my little brain explode and not in a good way. It makes me question what the heck I've even watching and if I'm high. Which I probably was, to be fair, but like, ah! Uh, yeah, like, if you did like this episode, I can see perfectly why you did like it. Because it is, if it, it's nice for what it is, but for me, it just didn't hit as hard as some of the upper episodes. Next up is Smoochie Kiss. Oh man, Smoochie Kiss. Honestly, originally, I did not like it, but I did. However, re-watching this episode so it did kind of make me think, should I move this a little bit higher? Was I wrong about this episode? <laughs> because re-watching it, it is actually kind of funny. And I do now kind of regret it moving it this far down, but honestly, it is what it is. <laughs> I can't really do much about it. Although maybe in the future, if I do another tier list stream or a re-tier listing of Bluey, maybe I can move this up higher. Next up, Bones. Oh man, this one kind of hurts to be ranking so low because I love the granddad episode, man. It was so wholesome and nice. But I also have to be honest, but this episode is kind of just okay. Like them playing together, you know, with granddad, it's nice and all that. There's also not anything like spectacular or amazing about this episode diaper that's ever like funny or just like anything. If anything, I just feel kind of bad for the grandpa or granddad, sorry. Just because, you know, he's trying his best with the kids. They can't really do anything because, you know, they don't understand technology nowadays, which is kind of sad. But at least they kind of like work it out in the end. And, you know, they work along with what the kids are playing, which is nice. But other than that, I don't know, I just didn't really like the episode all that much. Stomp Fest. Oh boy, Stomp Fest. Honestly, for the most part, I like this episode. It's nice. I like Stomp Fest. And when they were like, you know, taking the stuff apart and everything, it seemed, you know, the parents get all tipsy with their drinks. It's kind of funny from an adult's point of view. But Jesus 
Jesus Christ, Bluey was such an asshole in this episode. You know, Bluey's all like, hey, you know, let's do this a lot here. And then, you know, with it, it's like, okay, but just know we're gonna come over there and we're gonna take it down once we're finished with this one. Bluey's like, okay. And then later on, Bluey acts like nothing happened, like, huh? <laughs> And then, you know, when they reach the agreement to, you know, them take the stuff out in exchange for getting your nails stained, which, okay, unironically, I would love to get my nails painted. I don't know if I would want to get them painted all the time, but I want to get my nails painted once just to see what it's like and want to know what the feeling's like having your nails painted. But yeah, with Stumpfest as well, even after, you know, they reach the agreement, Louis said, like, no, please, we, you know, I want to continue doing nail salon stuff. And it's like, raw, you already already reached the agreement. Just let them have their fun and stop being a dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other than that, the episode is pretty funny and the lesson here is kind of nice. It's like, hey, maybe don't ruin other people's fun even when you think they're ruining your fun. But also the ending part is kind of being spirited with them drinking. I'm guessing it's pissed for no reason. Like, why do you have to ruin their day bluey like that? Why are you being a piss? All right. Moving on to Daddy Put Down. Oh man, Daddy Put Down. Honestly, this episode is not bad by any means. Like, it's perfectly fine for what it is. It just wasn't really that like funny or particularly amazing compared to some of the other episodes, in my opinion. Except for, you know, obviously, <laughs> the Family Guy death pose here. That was a nice Easter egg thrown in there. Yeah, other than that, this episode doesn't really have much substance to it, and it's kind of just, it's just fine. They would trampoline on It's similar to uh that he put down where kids and dad are having fun together. And the conflict, you know, it's not anything too crazy. And it just overall the episode's fine, but for what it is, it's nice. It's just nice for what it is. Driving also with a similar boat. But at least in this time around, we got a chilly and bluey episode this time, which is cool to see because we don't usually see these two having that dynamic together. Yeah, other than that, the episode is just Fine. It's fine. It's nice. Movie dot. <laughs> explorers. Oh man, explorers. Honestly, again, not a bad episode. And it was kind of nice to see, you know, it was kind of nice to see Jack's dad, you know, What's the word I'm looking for? It was nice to see Jack's dad being able to push through all the obstacles in front of him and be able to reach his destination but also during this car up in the process with Jack's, I believe, sister, if I remember correctly. If not, I am sorry. Yeah, also with Jack here, trust me, I'm a fan of Jack. I love Jack. He's one of my favorite characters of the entire show. And so to see Jack kind of like, you know, stranded kind of made me a bit sad. Although it is kind of nice to know he's just, you know, playing the pretend because even when Calypso pointed out asking him hey are you okay he was just all good he was just getting into character yeah other than that nothing too crazy with this episode and it's just nice I like it okay mom school oh boy mom school let's talk about mom school originally with this episode I thought it was you know nice and you know I was actually gonna rank it a little bit higher and then the stuff with Bluey getting them hitting the balloons with the belt even like trust me dark humor at its finest and I like it but oh boy doing that on television was an interesting process yet yeah, I don't know but this episode there's not really much that I could say about it other than that scene it's not even not like a bad of an episode or anything it's just for me it just didn't hit as hard as some of the others show and tell oh this is weird show and tell feels completely different from stick bird and relax because with stick bird and relax i think they're great episodes but with show and tell it feels kind of meh like i know this is based off of what the creator of the show actually does with his kids which is nice but i don't know for me it kind of feels like a retelling of tina which in my opinion i didn't think really need to be retold so kind of just felt like he just asked the entire time uh why are we getting the retelling of dina for no reason or at least for me personally i didn't get it yeah other than that the episode's nice and of course this tomato scene oh man i feel bad for Bluey and bingo not being able to have the nice tomato sauce or is it tomato sauce i don't know how do australians say tomato i don't know yeah, moving on. The Road Trip. Road Trip is one of those episodes that honestly, there's something really inherently wrong with them. It. It's just for me personally, it didn't hit as hard as some of the others. But yeah, other than that, the episode is just nice. It has nice messaging. It has some nice humor. And then being on the notes, kind of a nice change of pace. 
bored yesterday. Oh, man, bored yesterday. This one kind of caught me by surprise a bit. Because it was pretty cool to see, like, Ben and, like, be fascinated with the leaf. And even after the game was over, like, they didn't still be interested in the leaf. That was a pretty cool instant of, you know, Bandit taking in his surroundings a bit. Because at least for me, I feel like sometimes you kind of forget, like, the world around you is beautiful. So this episode showcasing that is really nice. But other than that, there's nothing else really crazy about this episode, but it's a nice episode. I like it. Oh man, movies. I feel like some people are not gonna like the fact that I have movies ranked this low. Especially considering this scene right here. This scene with Vigo, you know, just having the blow dryer blow on them and create that funny, like, little verb image or whatever you want to call it. But it's just me, don't like. But also, in this episode, it feels like Bingo's being a lot more of a crazy child than usual. It's usually Bluey, I feel like, is the crazy child and not Bingo. I feel like Bluey and Bingo switched roles in this this episode more than anything with Bingo being the chaotic one and Bluey just being the like what does to conquer their fears and all that blah 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 yeah other than that the episode's fine it's nice Puppets on the other hand, oh boy. Honestly, I probably would have ranked puppets lower on this list if it wasn't for a certain bit at the end, which I actually have blurred because if you have not watched this episode, I want you to watch it right now just for this ending bit because the ending bit here is so cool. Other than that, the episode is just fine, but this episode is ranked higher just for this little like cool bit at the end. Oh, Jesus, I skipped a slide. Whale watching. Oh man, whale watching. Honestly, again, nothing inherently wrong with this episode. Though it does feel kind of like, what's the word I'm looking for? When you like manipulate someone into thinking a certain thing when the episode was probably perfectly fine as is. Like I'm talking about like, you know, chilly, you know, having to pretend to be like a huge whale and do all of this just for the kids. And then to have the TV be like, you know, a mother would do anything for their children. Kind of like guilt, guilt tripping. That that's the word I'm looking for. Guilt tripping the mother into doing the whole whale jump thing. But trust me, it was glorious and hilarious. But Jesus Christ, why are you like getting guilt tripping this mother? What the f***? But yeah, other than that, it's a pretty fun episode nonetheless. And have some really funny phrases as you can see I got. Hey. Wanted to clarify something real quick. On rewatch of this episode, I realized that like, oh wait, this is the reason why they kind of manipulated a little bit chilly in this because, you know, with Bandit doing all the work and all being pushed to like push himself to the limit and all that with him being the boat and all that. Seeing Chili, you know, not really do as much and still get like the snacks and all that and all that. You know, with that context, I can more understand why, you know, they did made the TV's kind of like guilt trip her manipulate her like looking back i understand more well now why they did what they did do i still agree with it personally no and i probably wouldn't have changed my ranking anyway with this new information in mind but hey i just wanted to say i now understand why we can move on so yeah let's go ahead and continue on with the video but other than that, let's move on to Postman. Postman is an interesting episode because it actually puts the hands into like Bluey and Bingo to help the parents. Even though, let's be honest, they probably didn't need help regardless. But otherwise, it was nice seeing, you know, Bluey and Bingo work together to, you know, figure out their differences and kind of realize like, hey, sometimes you do kind of have to argue to, you know, actually figure stuff out. You can't always just agree and then, you know, just hope it would be fine. You sometimes have to disagree and sometimes like talk it out in order to resolve something which was a nice lesson to see play out and to see you know the love flourish with banded love being chilly with the heart note it was sweet i liked it it was nice the substance in general it's just nice would highly recommend Bus. Okay. Bus, honestly, I mean, obviously it was going to be rank 5 because grannies, like, who cannot love a granny episode of Bluey? But in particular with Bus, okay, this is probably just a big thing, but why the f*** was Bandit so horny for that giraffe? Like, Jesus Christ, man. Bandit, look at what's in front of you, man. It kind of just felt like the entire time Chili's, like, pretend crush in the game for the bus driver was just for nothing. Because apparently, the bus driver has a crust on a f***ing giraffe! And yeah, this episode was just chaos, but it was a nice kind of chaos, and it was fine, so. It goes in number 109 for a reason. 
screens. Honestly, in this episode, I didn't really get that much, but maybe that's just me and my dirty American ass not understanding Australian stuff or Australian culture. Other than that, the episode was nice for what it is. There was nothing, anything outstanding from it, except for Queen Chili obviously getting the recognition he deserves. Beta going haywire over those tree leaves or whatever it was. Yeah, other than that, it's nice. Would recommend. Jesus Christ, calm down, mouse. Pizza Girls! Okay, honestly, Pizza Girls is a nice episode. You know, it was nice to see the, like, hey, well, you know, like, new stuff can be, you know, great in some aspects. Sometimes the old and classic stuff is also good. And sometimes combining that and working together in harmony could actually do a lot better, which I found to be a really nice message. And the episode is pretty funny in general, especially that, like, car chase sequence. Jesus Christ. Who knew Muffin could drive? Like, I see Muffin being a great driver when they're younger, if they could always drive that good with just a toy car. Yeah, the episode in general is just nice. I like it. Shadowlands. All right, Shadowlands. Shadowlands is honestly a nice episode as well. Well, except for Coco. Coco, I'll be honest, sometimes maybe like go, oh my god, please shut up. But other than that, it was nice to see Coco come around and understand why, you know, there are rules in the game. It was nice to see. And the whole game of like, why it happened to keep in shadows, I remember playing that as a kid, honestly. So it was nice to see that in an episode of Bluey. Okay, this episode we have to talk about. A lot of people hate Blue Mountains. They consider it one of the worst episodes of Bluey. And originally, honestly, I don't get why people hate this episode. It's not that bad. And it wasn't until, like, I started to read and understand why people don't like Blue Mountains that I started to realize, oh, this is why people don't like this episode. People don't like Blue Mountains because the animation of the hands is kind of weird. <laughs> See that it, the arms don't even bend properly. And you know, there's some like weird imagery sometimes with, you know, bandit sucking on the hands, which is kind of disgusting. And the shots of certain parts of bandit are kind of weird. Like, once I started understanding that, I could get why people don't really like this episode. But for me, honestly, I still think it's fine. I will always say this, I will appreciate when showrunners, YouTubers, movie makers, producers, etc. take a risk and do something new or try to tell a story in a new and unique way. I will always appreciate that. And Blue Mountains does a great job of that with using the hands to tell the story while they're playing. And honestly, I just like this episode in general. It could just be me, but I will always like an episode that tries something new and an episode that sticks to the same formula over and over again and if you don't like it then i could understand why <laughs> magic oh man magic was an interesting episode of all the episodes this is one that made me go it does magic actually exist in blue because sometimes i question that because sometimes there's episodes like sheepdog that make me question if there actually is magic in blue and stuff like this but magic literally in the title does make me question that but it was nice to see the playing along and understanding that you need to control magic and not take the overpower of it and then you don't see the dance sequence with lucky's dad and Bandit was pretty cool to see. Yeah, other than that, magic is nice. Wouldn't recommend. Okay. Keep me up, honestly, there's not much to say because this was like literally the third episode of Bluey ever released. There's not much in comparison, but for what it is and what it came out at the time, it's honestly pretty nice. For what it is. It's not like a grand masterpiece or anything, but for what it is, Keep me up is pretty nice. And I would definitely recommend it. Trains, trains, Jesus Christ. Again, why is Bluey being an asshole? <laughs> At least with him, not him. G, Jesus. I swear, sometimes I keep calling him G's, G, him's for no reason. And if I do that throughout the entire stream, I apologize. I'm not doing it to be mean. It's unintentional. <laughs> yeah, why is Bluey being a dick with a cat? I mean, I get it because play game reasons, but oh my goodness. Cranes is just nice for what it is. And then finally, the last episode in the low B tier list is Neighbors. Nothing much to say about this episode, except for the fact that Jesus Christ, Bingo and Banner were annoying, which I get. For the sake of, you know, this episode, I get why they were annoying. But Jesus Christ, it doesn't mean they still weren't annoying. <laughs> but honestly, seeing like Chili and Bully pull up the whole like, hey, I'm giving you the stern look, and you better do what I 
can tell you to do right now, or I swear to God, I'm gonna make sure you regret it. And <laughs> see Bandit and Bingo just be threatened by it, it was pretty funny to see. And seeing the conflict result with everyone being able to live happily ever after as neighbors was nice. I like it, and I would definitely recommend it. And with that, we end it off here for today. Because Jesus Christ, I feel like I've lost my voice, even though it's not even that long of a stream. We're just gonna end this off here for right now, and we're then gonna continue tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow, but continue on another day. See how it goes along. Well, technically, for the viewers watching home, it's only gonna be a couple of seconds right now. But for you, it's gonna be a couple of days. So see you until I see you, where we continue with the top 100. Welcome to day two. We went through the bottom 50, but now we're going to do the top 100. And it should be interesting this time because I actually added in a little something behind the scenes. So for a bit of context, around the five year anniversary of Bluey, ABC or whatever company that's running Bluey, honestly, I, I don't know anything about companies, please forgive me. <laughs> they did a little something for the five year anniversary where they asked all of Australia, the country, like, hey, Hey, what are your favorite Bluey episodes? Please let us know. And then after they got 50,000, I am not joking, 50,000 votes, they then got the top 100 picks of their favorite episodes and played it all in a marathon, which I thought was cool, but then I kind of realized, wait a minute, hold on, thinking cap here. I'm about to do my own top 100 ranking. What if, after each slide I do, what if I then showcase Bluey Fest's ranking, aka all of Australia's ranking, just to see if there is a difference in opinion. And after that, I spent like two hours adding 100 more slides, where after I told you a bit about the episode with that ranking, I did show Bluey Fest's ranking, just to see if there was a difference. I think it's gonna be very interesting to see what's gonna happen. I'm very interested to see how differences in opinions are gonna be. But all right, with that, let's go ahead and continue. And move on to the 20 medium B tier, which if you were not here last stream, I did the 20 bottom B tier. There was a lot of episodes ranked to B tier, okay? I had to split it up somehow. And now we're moving on to the medium. And let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Starting out with number 100, theoretically, Iggy Back. Iggy Back was an interesting episode to me because it really showcased how it could be hard to do something if you don't really have the motivation for it. Hell, that was true for this stream. I wasn't able to do the stream yesterday due to a lack of motivation to do it. But today, I had the motivation and I was able to do it. So I relate to Bingo here. I relate to Bingo in this instance. But overall, it was a nice episode that really showcased, hey, maybe it's not the case of the entire sometimes you just need some motivation in your life however that may be and compared to Bluey Fest it did not show up in the list at all which honestly fair enough I can see why moving on to number 99 Zoo was an interesting episode in the fact that it was another play episode where there wasn't really a lesson it was just mostly there for funsies just some fun with the kids you know, the parents and kids having fun. But I enjoyed it. You know, the only real reason I think I make this up is because of Bandit's jump here. But, you know, this scene happened. I mean, it was glorious. Did you see that jump he did, Bandit did? That was glorious. I wish I could jump a fence that good. But other than that, there's nothing else was significant about this episode that made me go, Wow, holy sh**. Instead, my VTuber is gonna freeze. Fantastic. But other than that, it's a good episode, but not really the best either. And a good showcase of that is the fact that it didn't even show in the Bluey Fest ranking either, which, again, fair enough, Australia. Fair enough. But now we move on to Hospital. I've seen some people rank this episode a bit lower in their rankings, but for me personally, I found it to be one of the more funnier episodes of Bluey. And plus, this was the second episode of Bluey I ever watched, which helped me glue into wanting to watch the rest of the series, so that's also a reason why I ranked it a little bit higher, probably. But other than that, there's nothing really special about this episode. It's just more just slice of life fun, playing games with the kids, and it's good for what it is. I like it. It seems like all of Australia agrees because it was ranked number 86. But hey, I agree with. I'm glad we agree, Australia, that it should be on the list. But now Octopus. Oh man, Octopus. Let me tell you about Octopus. Unironically, if I was a parent in Bluey, I feel like I would be this parent. <laughs> Unironically, because as much as I would love to be the type of parent like Bandit, I also have to admit that at least for me, I am an over-analytical 
I am the guy that will look at the smallest of details and go, um, well, actually, you can't do it like this because this is this. That's me. I'm that type of guy. I'm that annoying guy. But the way they also like solved the resolution with Chloe and her dad was honestly really sweet. Seeing them like come to agreement, like, hey, while it may be untrue for some aspects, there are also some more things we could add in to make the game more fun and also like understanding each other as well was really sweet i really liked it okay i think the only reason i did rank it a little bit lower was because it did make me like huddle up and cringe a little bit because for me it was like oh god i relate to this dad way probably way too much but overall i liked it and i am kind of having slight regret that i didn't rank it a little bit higher but it's fine it's fine it is what it is and it wasn't even on the blue fist ranking once more which Honestly, fair enough. Like, I can see why it's not really anyone's favorite, but I was kind of hoping a small little bit that I could have been there, but oh well. Next up was Tina, though. Jesus Christ, Tina is a level 100 boss. Like, being able to literally crush like, the Bluey's parents? Jesus. But also, Bluey's parents, why are you letting this happen? Please put on your big shoes and control your children. Like, trust me, as funny as this all was, there was a thought in the back of my brain that went, okay, why aren't they doing anything about this? Why are they going along with this game? And they're literally becoming spoiled brats. But other than that it was a funny episode and i liked it so who gives a f am i right and surprise surprise it also didn't make it into the bluey fest ranking which again fair enough backpackers so backpackers is an interesting case because one of the few episodes that we get to see socks again we've had a lot of episodes with muffin but rarely anything with socks and i'm hoping to god that changes with season four i really hope we get to see more of socks because socks is one of my favorite characters but other than that backpackers was a fine fun episode i think the adventure jillian bandit went through was pretty cool i'm kind of running out of things to say for this episode which kind of showcases that i kind of just thought it was okay and not anything special and yeah, it's, it's fine for what it is. I will say the... Okay, it's so fine that, again, my VTuber glitches. Hey, VTuber model, look at me. Work. But yeah, it's fine for what it is. And for anyone curious, it was break number 67. How the f***? Listen, I know it's a good episode, but I don't know if it's that good, okay? I don't know if it's so good that my VTuber model keeps freezing. Okay, seriously, why the f*** is he doing that? I don't get that. <laughs> Moving on, the favorite thing. Honestly, for the most part, I don't know why I ranked this episode this high. <laughs> Looking back on it and re-watching this episode, I was kind of like thinking like, oh yeah, why did I rank it so high? Because nothing crazy or nothing really happens. There's nothing crazy that goes on this episode. It's mostly just the Bluey family having dinner, Bingo being all upset and embarrassed, Bluey trying to help, but then for some reason it's not helping at all. And it takes literally dude all of them to say dude to fix it and then bandits spitting out their drink like this which can i just say when it happens and then you know the drink also like comes out of your nose it is disgusting and it feels horrible like i had i had i bleh, i had that happen to me before with orange high c and it sucked it felt very gross and weird but hey other than that it's a fine little episode it is what it is moving on and it was ranked well actually it wasn't ranked at all really fast which honestly fair enough and the next episode is sean sean is it's an episode Suck. Dawn was an okay episode where, again, nothing too crazy happened. It was kind of just showing what would happen if they had a pet and how to control your pet, which is kind of nice. And also it was just dad playing games for the kids, which was nice. But other than that, there's nothing too crazy that goes on in this episode. So yeah, we're just going to move on. And hey, we were actually in agreement somewhat. I had mine in 93. And believe this, I had it in 95. 95. You know what? I'm glad we could agree, Australia. I'm glad we could agree. But yeah, continuing on with Taxi. This was again another playful episode where there wasn't really a lesson. It was just more or less the kids and the parents playing games and having fun. And overall, it was nice. It was a nice little episode. But with it, there also wasn't anything crazy along with it. There was some funny moments, of course, with, you know, notorious guests that were coming to the taxi. Like this and their child barfing all over the man. But other than that, though, it's nice for what it is, but we can move on. And as you can see, it also wasn't ranked highly in Bluey Fest, which, hey, fair enough. But next up is Cubby. Cubby was... Cubby was so f***ing unrealistic. 
Like, I'm not saying like a kid, like a world where dogs are alive and all that isn't already unrealistic. I mean, the fact, like, look at how big this board is. They literally built an entire mansion in their living room. So big that my VTuber model is glitching again. Jesus Christ, VTuber model, please calm down. Like, seriously, how the f were Bully and Bingo able to build all of this with just, you know, a couple of pillows and blankets and all that? That surprised me more than anything in this episode was the creativity. But I'm willing to bet it so. It was probably very fun for the animators having to design all that. That must have been fun. That must have been really fun to do. But yeah, other than that, it's a nice little episode. But other than that, there wasn't really anything crazy as well about the writing specifically, which not to say the episode's bad, it's just, it's just fine. It's good for what it is. Which, speaking of, this is rank number 18 from Bluey Fest. Excuse me? I mean, okay, I can understand why it's ranked so high. Because, theoretically speaking, most of the people who probably voted with Bluey Fest are probably kids. And they probably really like this episode because of all the whimsical colors and the actual part itself being really cool. So, I get why, you know, it's ranked so high. But I still heavily disagree. It is not number 18, man. It is just not but i can understand it and hey i'm glad people like this episode nonetheless but moving on to musical statues musical statues i feel like it's the one where bluey just had enough the very beginning with bluey just you know just being done with it coming down the door just like Ugh. and you know just, just being done with it be done with life i feel like at the very beginning of the episode just was not happy that they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never but then you know at the end having some music dance with helping to cheer them up it's honestly pretty nice to see glad they cheered bluey up but other than that though it was a fine little episode but i enjoyed it and thought it was good and for those curious it wasn't ranked on bluey fest which hey fair enough kind of wish it was but moving on but next up is shops and jesus christ if this if, if, if this was an episode dedicated to cats well i mean would they ever do an episode on cats i kind of hope they do just because i want to see what that's like but other than that seriously what were the kids on when they were doing all the meows here were the kids all just f***ing high besides mackenzie because i feel like all the kids were high except for mackenzie and that scene just going meow 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 it's just me slowly but surely losing my mind as it was happening. <laughs> yeah, other than that, it was nice to see Mackenzie and Bluey fix it out, you know, talk it out, happy, you know, I don't know what to describe it as. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I am out of it right now. But hey, the episode was nice. I liked it. I'm not going to focus on it for too long, although I do want to mention real quick. Music at the end choice, really great music choice editors and music producers. Very solid choice there at the end. Other than that though, it was nice and I liked it. And for those curious, Stops wasn't ranked, which hey, I totally get why it wasn't ranked this high, but it is what it is. Oh boy, the decider. Now this one in particular, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be ranking a lot higher. And I don't blame them, honestly. But for me personally, if you removed the serious stuff about this episode, for me, it just didn't resonate as much because I'm just not a fan of sports. Straight up, I think sports is boring. But I think for those that are a fan of sports, this episode's going to be good for you. And plus, Jesus Christ, seeing like the hidden message of, you know, divorce playing to a factor secretly with the kid happy to decide between the mom and dad to go with oh man the underlying message there that is that is deep that was very deep there but i very appreciate that they tackled it nonetheless for me i just didn't hit as hard because i'm very fortunate to be with a loving family that didn't divorce but I still think the fact that Tactical looks great, and I think the episode is good as is. It just didn't hit for me personally as hard as some of the other episodes, but I can definitely see why people ranked it higher. As you can clearly see, people ranked it a lot higher, number 29, at least for Bluey Fest in Australia. But honestly, I'm not even mad. I'm glad people really enjoyed this episode. It's just for me personally, it didn't click. And now next up is perfect. Honestly, re-watching this episode, I kind of regret not breaking this one a little higher on the list. But I still think number 87, yes, you could add in your FNAF references here now. 
Was that the bite of 87? It's still pretty good for what it is. And I do appreciate, you know, the fact that like, hey, there are a person there that not being perfect because trust me, I sometimes have a hard time with that when it comes to video the other day. I'm just like, I gotta make this video perfect, babe. I also gotta turn this in on time. And also, the episode itself was honestly pretty hilarious. And the more I'm like thinking about it and the more I'm talking about it, the more I'm realizing I should have ranked this a lot higher, but it's too late now. We can't go back. But honestly, please give this episode a watch if you haven't. It's a pretty good episode, honestly. It's not as funny as some of the upper episodes, but it definitely got a good kick out of me, and I think it's really nice for what it is. And it does upset me a little bit that this episode was not ranked in Bluey Fest. Like, how the f***? Bluey Fest. Australia. What are you thinking? Australia, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, I can understand why they didn't rank they rank it i mean i originally didn't rank it much higher so i guess that's fair and v2 per bottle please for the love of god work it is what it is and i'm glad i did it yeah <laughs> the next up is bad mood oh man bad mood aka the episode where bandit had enough of your shit and basically destroyed the entire house just because you i can because this is my house but honestly, after did that, it was a nice episode for what it was. And it did got some good laughs out of me. But well, the antics that Bandit and Baker were going on with Bad Mood. But other than that, the episode doesn't really have anything too crazy going for it. But I just think it's nice for what it is. And I think the way they resolved it at the end was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Except why the f*** is this 131? Now I'm in a bad f***ing mood. Bluey Fest. Australia. What are you thinking? How f***ing dare you rank this number 31? It's not that good. Calm down, Australia. <laughs> Calm down, Australia, okay? Stop being high. Or is it from all the blood that's going to your head being upside down? Anyways, moving on. Oh, Trades. Oh, f Trades. Trades was honestly a nice episode. It was kind of wholesome to see them having a connection. What am I saying? <laughs> I mean, like, they stroke a little bit of friendship, and they help each other out at the very end, despite them being quote-unquote enemies. But them able to have a resolution, coming together to fix the problem, was cool to see. And see, you know, hey, they did get back together. The dog and his girlfriend, be able to also work it out after being enemies and coming back together, was also really cool to see. And yeah, I enjoyed it. I like this episode. To me. And for those interested, it got number 12. Again, I don't personally agree with them. But honestly, I can kind of see why it was ranked a lot higher. So, hey, good for you, Australia. I'm glad for you. But moving on. Veranda Santa. Oh boy, Veranda Santa. Okay, I'm gonna get some for flack for this one. But I don't think this episode is as good as some people say it is. And I think the only reason people are ranking it so high is because it's the Christmas episode. Which, hey, trust me, I like Christmas as much as the next guy. But come on, guys, be realistic. Bluey was such a bitch in this episode. <laughs> being the ways that Bluey was being an asshole to Socks for no reason and to the rest of the family was... Oh boy, it grinded some gears a bit, let me tell you. But seeing it all come to an end and being like, hey, the reason you should be nice is to just be nice and not for presents or anything like that because Santa's around. Seeing Bluey apologize to Socks and them fix it up being happy ever after was nice to see. I appreciate that. <laughs> this episode belongs to C-Minds. Okay, calm down. It's not C-Minds. But yeah, other than that, this episode is nice. And I'm glad we did get a Christmas episode. I don't think it's the best. Christmas episode. The better Christmas episode is gonna come later. But hey, I'm glad. At least we got a decent Christmas episode. I'm happy for that. It's ranked number 55. Again, I can kind of see why it was ranked so high, but I honestly disagree. I think it should be a little bit lower in that ranking, in Australia. Just saying. But we've gone to Chicken Rat. Honestly, there is no particular reason why I ranked Chicken so high, except for one reason. And that was for its honestly really cool, unique storytelling here. I am a sucker for unique storytelling in any sort of medium, whether that be YouTube videos, TV shows, movies, you name it. Any sort of medium that tells a unique story in a unique way, I love the bits. And Chicken Rat is one of those instances where they did 
tells the story uniquely by going backwards in a way where we kind of see like as time progresses how we got to where we are now through flashback and i thought that was really cool and i really liked that unique storytelling other than that though the episode is kind of just bad yeah the reason i rank it so high is because of the unique storytelling and i hope to god i really hope to god we get to see more unique storytelling in blue because i love unique storytelling man i love it i love it when people try new things and try to tell stories in unique ways i love it when that happens but that it was ranked number 80 again Bluey Fest. I'm glad we could come to an agreement. This episode's obviously not one of the best, but I am very glad that, you know, we come to the agreement that it should be at least in the top 80. I'm very happy about that. Thank you for agreeing with me, Australia. I appreciate that a lot. Turtle Boy! Oh man, Turtle Boy was honestly just a fun episode. And I did like the nice little like mix of storytelling here where we saw, you know, Bingo and Bannon coming in in the playground and wanting to take the Turtle Boy home, but not, you know, because I would be stealing, obviously. But also seeing the representation of a deaf character, which is always great to see. We stand good representation in good TV shows. All right, and I just realized I should, probably should have switched to this screen a long time ago for this episode. And seeing them also being like, hey, we also probably shouldn't steal this because, you know, stealing. <laughs> and just seeing that back and forth was really cool. And also the bits with Bingo and Bandit with the TV was obviously hilarious. And now that I'm saying this all done now, I'm kind of realizing maybe I should have ranked this a little higher. I'm kind of regret my decision here, but it's fine. I'm glad for what it is, and I'm very happy we got good representation. And it's honestly a pretty good episode nonetheless. I really like it a lot. And it was ranked number 19 on Louis Fest, which was shocking. Now, for me personally, I disagree. However, I'm not gonna get mad with that ranking because I think it's a good episode of Bluey nonetheless. And I'm glad that a lot of people love this episode, especially since it had good representation. I'm betting a lot of deaf people IRL related to them and felt happy seeing representation with them. But yeah, I'm not even mad with that ranking. I'm happy that a lot of people like it. Hello, I just wanted to real quickly say that looking back on this episode, I was completely wrong for breaking this as low as I did. Because after rewatching the episode and really looking at all the behind the scenes that went into this one episode alone, just to make sure that it was a great representation of a deaf character and for the deaf community as a whole. Seeing all that, but also like the parallel lesson of like, even though these characters are completely different with how they communicate or how they're like, you know, how their general lives may be, both of these kids are still very much the same. The only difference between Dougie and Bingo is that they communicate differently, which is honestly not only just really sweet, but also just a fantastic message for everyone in general. And with knowing all of this, I really said I should not have put this into B tier. I really should have put this episode in S tier, which is why hopefully if I ever redo this tier list again, I am most definitely putting this one in S tier. Mark my words. I made a mistake playing this in B tier, but I'm hoping on a redo of this, maybe in the future, maybe not, who knows. Just know, I appreciate this episode a lot more now, and that I'm definitely going to be putting it in S tier whenever I can. So yeah, I just wanted to give that update real quickly, but with that, let's continue on with the video. And now we're going to move on to number 81, Bedroom. Bedroom was honestly a nice episode. And it was honestly really wholesome to see, you know, Bluey and Bingo realizing, oh, we can't sleep well because we need to sleep next to each other because we're used to that. That, I felt, was really wholesome. You know, it was really... Jesus Christ, a lot of stuff is going wrong right now. Gotta love it, man. You gotta love it when stuff goes wrong, am I right? It's just the best. A lot of stuff is going wrong with this stream, but I don't care. I'm gonna continue this ranking. I don't care. I got this far and I'm not stopping now, it. Let's continue with Bluey. And starting off, but now the 19 high B tiers. We're close to finishing the B tier, guys. We're getting close. Isn't that crazy? We're close to finishing the B tiers. So let's get to it. Starting out. Number 80, Pavlova. Honestly, out of all the episodes of Bully, this is one of the most hilarious ones. It's because of this bit right here. You know, they're building it up, you know, the chef be kind of bad chef. <laughs> Not understanding Pavlova, because of, you know, obvious reasons in the episode. It's all funny. And then, as soon as you think they're gonna serve the Pavlova, man just squirts over the Pavlova. It's like, damn, you just ruined good Pavlova. That's savage. And it was... 
glorious. That was the best part about it. It was glorious and I loved it. And it was honestly a really cool message focusing like, hey, maybe don't force your kids to try stuff. Unless you absolutely have to, of course. Because at least for me, I'm a picky eater and I relate to Bingo heavily when they mentioned how they didn't like being forced to try new food. They just wanted to naturally try it when they wanted to. And I felt that. That's why I'm so scared to try new foods because I felt forced to. And now I'm trying to break that mold myself as an adult. Trying to break that picky eater habit because of stuff like this. So seeing an episode like this makes me wish I had it when I was a child because it would have really helped. Honestly, it really would have. So that's why I'm glad this episode 6 exists. Jesus. But I don't think it's as good, unfortunately, as some of the other episodes on this list. This kind of just shows that Bluey is an awesome show. It's like, in general. Like, if this is, like, not one of the funniest episodes even though it's pretty funny. I think that shows the quality of the show itself. I think that alone shows it. And I think Bully Festival Group, because it was ranked number 53. But I don't know if I would have ranked it that high. I'm still glad it got ranked pretty high. I'm happy about that. Next up was Helicopter. Helicopter is honestly an episode I feel like a lot of people tend to forget. Which is kind of sad because it's the episode where, you know, Bully's whole... What the f***? I just heard like noises on my end. That was creepy. It was the episode where Bluey was just like, not hooray, comes from. And also like seeing Bluey having to accept the fact like, hey, there's some stuff that is out of their control. Brew playing helicopter with the other kids at the school. It was honestly pretty cool to see how they resolved it. And also, listen, anytime we get a Jack and Rusty cameo, it's obviously going to be ranked pretty high in my book. I don't care what you say. I stand these two. Hate me all you want. I don't care. I I love them. We stand them in this house. And it upsets me greatly that this episode was not even ranked from Bluey Fest. Like, this is what I mean why I feel like people don't talk about this episode enough. It's a good episode, man. Why was it not ranked? That's sad. That's sad as fuck, man. What the fuck? But yeah, we're just gonna move on. The Hide and Seek! Finally, we get to talk about the episode about everyone's favorite game, Hide and Seek. Which, originally this episode was kind of just, it was a nice little episode of Bluey. Seeing Bluey get distracted was extremely relatable to my ADHD ass. But, the reason I do have it ranked so high is because how they handled the resolution. I think it's very cool how they did it. We have, you know, the little thing of the start with the gnome. And she looks like, hey, he's relaxed and he's calm now. And Ben mentioning how the reason why they're relaxed is so they don't get distracted. And then at the very end of the episode during the resolution, Blue is like, you know what, let me do the same. And then the music becomes quiet. The atmosphere starts to turn white to show that Blue is focusing. Even with Shadow Max blaring their ears out, they're able to focus and realize what they were distracted from it was really cool to see and i loved it i loved how they handled the resolution like that and yeah overall it was a good episode of bluey and i liked it and once again i am saddened that this episode is not ranked on bluey fest man why why is this not ranked the Movie dot. The Unicorns. Oh boy, Unicorns. The iconic unicorn from the episode Unicorns. The one that, and I quote, eats children. And it is hilarious. But honestly, other than the Unicorns happen, which um, at least for me can get a bit annoying at times on rewatch. It was honestly a pretty funny episode. And I feel like the way they handled the resolution was also pretty cool. But obviously the main star was Unicorns. Unicorns being f***ing hilarious throughout the entire episode. But other than that, there's nothing else about this episode that makes me go, oh, this should be ranked higher. There you go. If it was curious, it was ranked 16, which is crazy. So crazy that it makes my VTuber model glitch again, which is becoming a habit I'm noticing throughout this stream. <laughs> I'm glad this episode is ranked, but it is not number 16 man australia you're f***ing high for thinking this should be ranked as high australia calm the f*** down it's not number 16 moving on oh boy the adventure the adventure was honestly a really interesting episode because again it was one of those episodes focusing on the play aspect and not really about teaching the lesson but what really liked me about this episode was it kind of felt cinematic not just because of the black bars obviously which obviously video others right such thank you for adding those black bars in and animators of course what really got me interested in this episode was the storytelling here and how it really felt like like a movie plot almost going on throughout their time playing chloe and bluey and 
I do appreciate the fact that they were switching roles as well throughout the them playing together. I thought that was an interesting test to show. It's like, hey, they are just playing. It's not that serious as this episode would make you think it was. And yeah, I really like it. I think it's a good episode of Bluey. I don't think it's as good as some of the other episodes, but I think it's nice. Although it does shock me that this wasn't ranked at all with Bluey Fest. That day kind of shocked me a little bit. I mean, I can kind of understand why it wasn't ranked, but I think it should have at least been in like the top 80 or something. Or hell, the top 70, in my opinion. Oh boy, Bob's and Dad's. <laughs> Look, the only reason I have this episode ranked so high is because of Rusty in that bonnet and baby outfit. If that was not in this episode, I would have ranked it a lot lower. But because it's there, and because it's hilarious, the antics that went on with Bluey and Rusty here, is why it's ranked as high. But other than that, why was Cindy so f***ing annoying in this episode? Like, seriously. I get you want to, you know, go to work and have someone take care of your baby, but why are you trusting random strangers with your baby just be like, okay, here's my child. Anyways, I'm gonna go to work and they get pissed off when, you know, stuff happens to your baby. But it's like, dude, you're a horrible mother by just leaving them behind like that. What the f***? Yeah, other than that, the resolution was nice and the episode overall was pretty funny and yeah, it was a good episode of Bluey. <laughs> there you go. Okay, Jesus Christ, I'm, this is the moment where I'm starting to lose my voice, so oh boy. And again, now ranked on Bluey Fest, which I can kind of see why it wasn't, but I still think it should be ranked nonetheless. <laughs> Moving on, the Calypso. Speaking of Calypso, I never mentioned it in in the last slide, but I like Calypso. And this episode is a good representation of why Calypso is awesome, man. Seeing Calypso help out all the students, you know, seeing them all work together and stuff, it was all really nice. It was nice to see, that, like, hey, the kids, you know, stuck with the teacher, they're in good hands. They're gonna do great with Calypso. I thought this episode was really nice overall. There was nothing anything spectacular about it, but I just really liked it for what it was. It was ranked number 58. Same. Hey, I'm happy for it. Thank for making it as high bully fest. I appreciate that. Markets. Markets was a fun episode, honestly. The entire environment being unique with it being like inside of a market. I've never really been to a market. The only thing I would really consider as a market was the county fair in North Carolina as a kid. But other than that, honestly, it was interesting to see Australian culture with the markets. I thought it was really interesting to see. And I thought it was really cool when, you know, Bluey had to eventually pay that dollar buck away. And kind of sad that she did lose the dollar buck, only to then slowly but surely be giving it back to her through multiple people buying off of each other like that until Bluey did somehow eventually get the dollar back and then pay it off to the musician which hey special gets appearance from the musician behind all the Bluey episodes he stand that love the dude I mean in that I really enjoyed this episode I think it's a good episode although I am upset that Disney Plus at least in the US, censored the poop being seen with the pony. I am so upset about that. Seeing the uncensored version of it, it was hilarious. Why did they get rid of this segment? I don't get it. And I am shocked that this episode was not ranked high. Hell, it wasn't even all Bluey Fest. Again, Australia. What the f***? Australia, be honest. Are you high? Or is from all the blood that went into your brain for being upside down, really that, you know, made you this dumb? Like Australia? Come on. Marcus was great. Why don't you have it ranked? What the fuck? And we're moving on. The dirt. Hey, we got the redemption of what is their name? Juno. Juno. Right. This I almost forgot their name. My god. We got the redemption story of Juno and her mother. I mean, the real redemption of her mother I'm gonna get to later on. But this episode, man. It was interesting to see. Seeing, you know, the kids just having fun just being kids and having Juno not being annoying for once was pretty interesting to see. But then seeing the redemption of, of the mother, seeing her daughter just wanting to play with mud but can't because of all the hair. So you know what? This shaves it all off. And so you know what? Here, daughter, let me shave all the hair off of you so you can play. It was really cool to see. Plus the antics beforehand with Bleem Beagle actually wanting to help Juno, you know, actually play the dirt despite you know all the hair game play for her it was really nice to see and i feel like this episode really kind of redeemed her as a character for me at least because originally she was kind of an annoying but for this it kind of showed her we're kind of redeeming her a bit and i appreciate that as time goes on now i'm not saying like i dislike annoying characters in bluey or anything i just feel like originally with how they handled her it was not the best but hey 
now they're kind of handling her a lot better, in my opinion. So yeah, I'm glad. This episode made my sister cry. Really? This is the one that made your sister cry. Interesting. And for those curious, it was ranked number 52. Which, honestly, even though my ranking is 20, you know, some away from Blue Fest ranking, I'm glad people like this episode. I'm glad people like the redemption of Juno. I'm really glad to see that. Moving on though, do omelette. Omelette was a really wholesome episode of Bluey. Seeing the mother and Bingo cooking with each other was really nice to see. But oh boy, was Bandit being pissed as well. F***ing hilarious. I'm getting more angry and angry about the fact like, hey, where's my f***ing dinner on my birthday, mother f***er? <laughs> this is Bluey being like, hey, don't you dare move an inch. It was pretty funny. But the main conflict with, you know, the mother wanting to support Bingo and wanting to help her. But obviously Bingo kind of you know, messing it up because she's five, and then having that heartbreaking moment of Bingo feeling like she's not good enough to help, and because of that, you know, that is, it was really sad to see. But seeing that resolution at the end as well made it all the worth it. It was nice. But also, Jesus Christ, if Bingo could throw that hard, that not only my VTuber model glitches again, but Bluey trips and fills all the orange juice. Keep away from Bingo, man. Bingo's a lot stronger than you probably. I'll probably realize. For those curious as well, 97 for Bully Fest, which shocked me. So I'm like, how the f why is it ranked number 97? I'm glad it's ranked, but 97? Really? I ranked it a lot higher, as you can see. Hey, maybe I see something that Australia doesn't. Who the f knows? But then we move on to Fancy Restaurant. Oh boy, Fancy Restaurant. Man, fancy restaurant was really interesting. I've seen the fact that like, kind of showcasing like with kids, I feel like you kind of lose the romantic side of you because your focus is all about, you know, the kids now. You don't really have that much time to be romantic, which determining on your own personal preference can be kind of bad in some ways. But hey, as long as you still love them, I think it's all good in the end, you know? Which I think is kind of nice to showcase. But hey, showing your love for your partner can be in multiple different ways. I don't get love personally, I just don't, but maybe you are able to find something that I don't. I don't, I'll see of course. <laughs> Lily yelling at Bingo was also hilarious. But yeah. And number 99, it was ranked. Almost didn't make the list at all for Bluey Fest, which shocked me a bit. But honestly, this episode's more for like the parents, I feel like, than the kids, so I can kind of see why this episode wasn't ranked as high. But I still think it's good nonetheless, and I'm glad it's ranked pretty high nonetheless. <laughs> Welcome to day four. Yes, day four. I'm going to explain that later. Not going to lie, day three was kind of a train wreck. <laughs> you ever have one of those days where you think you're confident going into it, and then suddenly your brain just lags? You're not able to say anything? Yeah, that was day three. Which, looking back, is kind of terrifying the fact that at least tens of people are going to see that. <laughs> but it, at least... But, <laughs> Maybe you... And, you know, but what's God? I lost all train of thought. <laughs> they really showcase, you know. Oh my God! Why can't I think? My thinking brain is just gone right now. Holy sh! <laughs> this is one of the what's what's the word I'm looking for? Oh my God! I cannot think right now. <laughs> okay, you know what? Clearly, I am just out of it right now. Like, how the. F I am completely out of it right now. What is going on? I cannot think straight. Holy sh! But today, I feel much more confident and feel much more ready to do this tier list. And all right, with that, it's time to start the tier list. Starting out with number 69. Num the ranking for number 69 is... Leave me alone, Dad! <laughs> For those that are confused, my friend Nico, what up Nico, has the Mad Catify extension, which basically turns any thumbnail into a game theory thumbnail. And <laughs> the context here is too good. Obviously we have B, you know, Bluey and all that. But this, but the text here alone could be two things. One hand, it could be, let's say, my hypothetical dad coming into the room and embarrassing me and be just yelling that to get him away from me as much as possible, which is pretty funny. Or I see this in another way where <laughs> imagine an episode of Bluey where it's just Bluey being a teenager and being disrespectful to dad. <laughs> and then just imagine the f***ing intro 
sequence you know the like this episode is called lay me alone dad you piece of Oh my god, imagine someone please, I don't know who, someone please make that happen because that would be hilarious. But yeah, Nico sent it to me and I just, come on, how can I not share this? It's hilarious. But alright, with that, let's move on to the actual ranking of number 69, ah, which is barbecue. Now, since this is ranking number 69 in particular, I want to play a little game called how many times was Bingo tortured in this episode? Which basically meant I wrote down every single time that Bingo, you know, had a little conduct or by the parents or by their own accord. And I just want to see how many times this has happened. And let's just go down the list here. Let's just see. There is A, never getting to relax. Which is pretty sad if you think about it because that's what they were trying to do the entire episode. Two, she got pricked by forts. Three, had her plans ruined by chili, you know, trying to get the yellow peppers. Four, got attacked by a tree when trying to get the red peppers. Five, got all dirty with the mud trying to get the sauce. Six, speaking of getting sucked, got her bottom tickled by the hose, which is the most cartoonish thing imaginable, by the way. And then seven, had to clean the floor all by herself. What the fuck? How did all this happen? within just one episode. I counted seven things happening to Bingo, okay? Which is basically seven YouTube shorts or something happening every minute in the episode of Bluey. Oh, and if you think of that stare, it does not. Because stuff also happens with bandits. <laughs> the dad too, let's see. He, uh, A, gets his hat taken away by Bingo. Get bug flies to his face because of Bingo unintentionally. Three, his chair is taken away and then his soda falls because of it. And then four, is also attacked by the whatever the plant was inside the tree because of Bingo. These two, man, they were getting enough whatever the word is I'm thinking in my head. And it's just, what the f*** happened in this episode? What did these two do to deserve all the torture they got? That is my question. Which is probably why I ranked it a little bit more because it feels a little bit too cruel at times. Albeit very funny, but still kind of cruel to a four-year-old. But seeing that wholesome moment of, you know, Bingo didn't appreciate the silence and then everyone appreciates the silence and then Bingo finally gets to relax was nice. I liked it. And so yeah, this one's ranked number 69 for that reason. Just for those that are curious, it was ranked number 20 on Bluey Fest. Which personally, that shocked me. Because out of all the episodes of Bluey, I didn't expect this one to be in the top 20. I can understand why, because it's one of the more funny episodes of Bluey. But I don't think it's that good. And to be fair, I don't think Bingo being tortured for basically 7 minutes should be, you know, ranked that high. But hey, that's just me. Bingo's a freaking go. Exactly. We stand Bingo in this house. Trust me. They may not be my favorite character, but I stand them. It's really... Oh, Oh god, can you see that? Well, that's uncanny. <laughs> My hat just goes away. That's weird. Okay, hang on. That, that, that's gonna annoy me the entire day if I do not fix that. <laughs> there we go. That's much better. That, that was gonna drive me crazy if it didn't. If I didn't fix that. Anyways, the next episode of Bluey we want to talk about is Granny's at number 68. Now, already... I know for a fact that this episode is probably going to give me a lot of hate comments for breaking it this high. However, hear me out on this. In my opinion, this episode of Bluey is way overhated, and everyone that hates on this episode are overreacting. I'm just saying. This episode is not as bad as some people say it is. The only reason you hate this episode so much is because of the flossing. Let's be honest. That's the only reason you hate this episode. But if I'm being honest, I really like Granny's because they were able to turn the flossing into something wholesome. Which that I feel like is impressive. Not gonna lie. That's impressive to me. They were able to turn the whole flossy thing around. And the fact that we're able to, you know, usually with cartoons, I feel like they make fun of the old people just because they're older. They're like, ha ha, they don't get it. And that's funny. <laughs> what they do kind of do that in this episode. What this episode really does different is the fact that they were able to, you know, actually teach them. They actually convinced the grandparents to eat well, you know, they didn't teach the kids. The, the kids taught the grandparents. And it turns to something wholesome. And instead of, like, making fun of them for not knowing it, they taught them and said, and it made it a much better episode, in my opinion. Which that, I think, is a great, you know, break of the usual mold, and I appreciate that. But overall, I think it's a good episode. Not a great episode by any means, but it's good. However, it is not one of the top five episodes. 
Blech. One of the top five episodes of Bluey of all time, okay? That I have a problem with. You know, it's weird because I am like in the middle here where we have one side of the story where everyone absolutely despises this episode of Bluey because of the flossing. Then we got the other side that absolutely loves this episode because of the flossing involved, which Let's be fair, it's probably most likely just the kids. And then there's just me in the middle, just be like, hey, it's good, calm the f down. Although, and of course, with this episode, we also got the introduction to the granny. The here comes the grannies. So, it's a good episode all around. And people need to stop hating on it. Just saying. But now, Mr. Monkey Jocks. Ooh, Mr. Monkey Jocks. Honestly, this episode was pretty nice, all things considered. And if anything, this episode taught me to never underestimate kids. Because, hang on, let's talk about this for a second. The student bandit was like, okay, you like it so much to treat them special so we don't throw it away. And then the kids literally take that seriously and like, all right, we will. And then they literally just make bandits life a living ass because of that. Which these to me was pretty funny. But then that being turned around and you know, the kids are like, hey, you know, why don't you just become the monkey's butler? The bandit be like, you know what? Fine, I will. Which leads to them getting kicked out of their own house? Excuse me? How the f did they go from that? <laughs> To that, I will say that I did appreciate the message as well of maybe don't spoil your kids because if you do, they might turn into a little brat and you probably do not want that. So maybe don't spoil them. And at the same time, if you do have the main choice, hey, maybe give it away because it might bring new joy to another kid, which I think is a really cool message as well. And so yeah, I like this episode for that reasons alone. I will say though, I am shocked that this is literally ranked number 100. Literally exactly exactly on the dot in top 100 which is crazy to me because that means it barely got in i'm glad it got in but it did kind of shock me it is ranked as low as this so to be fair i can kind of understand why but yeah and with that let's move on to midnight oh midnight is such a nice chill episode what i especially like about this episode is that he took a simple concept of you know just taking out the bins and added so much more to that simple concept that makes it really memorable because while obviously you know they have them taking out the bins as you do but seeing the little details of louis i'm guessing into karate involved originally they had like a white belt or no belt whatever it is turned into a yellow belt was really cool to see and seeing bingo originally though being bullied which being bullied at four jesus christ that must be hard but seeing that turn around because due to bingo's possibility they're now friends now was really wholesome and yeah overall i just think this episode this is just like a really nice calming one where they took a simple concept and added so much more to it to make it great and now that i'm saying this out loud i kind of wish i ranked it a little bit higher but i'm still happy with how i ranked it although i will say i am shocked it did reach number 10 that i was not expecting which hey good on thin night i'm glad they got ranked as high as it did also i don't think it deserves to be ranked that high as well say <laughs> mount mom and dad honestly there's not much to say about this episode i just mostly like it because of you know the creative concept of the game being played with them climbing on mom and dad bluey and bingo which i don't know about you guys but i definitely did as a kid doing this and just seeing bluey and bingo work together was also pretty nice and yeah it's just a nice episode overall it's not anything special about it but it's nice and it's not even on the bluey best tier list which i mean well not tier list top 100 but yeah yeah, I can kind of see why it's not ranked this high, but at the same time, I kind of wish it was on here because I think it's a pretty nice episode nonetheless. So yeah. And oh boy, we're about to get to a controversial opinion here. Now before I say anything, I just want to get one thing straight. I do really like the bingo episode. I really do. Especially that intro sequence where it switches from, you know, the like, like mom, dad, the bingo and blue. It switches up to the blue and bingo. The color changes to an orange gradient. Bingo getting her spotlight was pretty awesome to see. However, if I'm being honest here, I also don't think that this episode is that good of a bingo episode. It's a fine bingo episode and I like it. Like it had some good jokes it was good pacing you know it was nice but if i be honest there's much better episodes of Louie that i feel like would be much better fitting to be all the bingo episode like slide or help but i have ranked this number two on this tier list i feel like those are much better examples of a bingo episode than this episode but 
Yeah, there you go. And for those that are curious, it was ranked number 17. I think I know why, to be honest, it is ranked number 17. I disagree personally, but hey, if your favorite character is Bingo and you ranked it highly because it was a Bingo Central Anthem, hey, I don't blame you. I'm happy you enjoyed it as much as you did. This for me personally, I didn't as much. So next up, we're going to talk about Yoga Ball at number 63. Yoga Ball was one of the first episodes of Blue I ever watched. And there's nothing really too big to note about this episode. I just really appreciated how they showcased like, hey, despite everything that's going on, they ended still being a good kid to bingo or... Not a good kid. A good parent. Sorry. Jesus. Bandit is not a kid. That Jesus Christ. If Bandit was a kid, I would be concerned. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate how Bandit was still being a good parent, despite, you know, the kids being kind of annoying. And even though, you know, he's kind of had enough of their shenanigans, he's still able to be a good father, Bingo, and make sure that Bingo is you know, being the best childhood that they can. I think the only reason I make this episode a little bit lower is because the episode itself is kind of forgettable because of the first half and because Jesus Christ. Christ, Bluey was so annoying in this episode. Holy shit. I hated how Bluey acted in this episode, man. Like, my god. So yeah, there you go. I do you think this episode's good overall? But I can never see why some people wouldn't rank it as high. Or not have it be in the top 100 in general. I disagree. I think it should be in the top 100. But hey, what do I know, right? What do I know? And the next up is Fairy. Oh boy. Fairies. If you did not know what fairies is, oh boy, let me tell you about fairies. This is one of the most chaotic episodes of Bluey out there. Despite all that chaos, it is actually pretty fun to see how it plays out. If you don't, it is extremely unrealistic, let's be honest. Like seriously, how the f did Bingo get on top of, let's see, the ceiling, ruin everything on the floor, the all the paintings and everything? Like, listen, I am all for Kabe to a bit for a game, but this feels like too much just because man. It yelled at Bingo and Bingo didn't get Bandit to knock over all the dominoes for her. It seems like a bit much, I'm just saying. But yeah, despite all that, I did enjoy myself. Despite all the shenanigans that occurred. Because it was all pretty funny. And it was pretty wholesome to see Bandit make it up to Bingo. It was pretty nice to see. For the security, it was ranked number 30. Which, not gonna lie, shocked me a bit. But I mean, hey, if people enjoy this episode that much, Hey, I'm happy people did enjoy it. I'm glad people did. Although, personally, I probably wouldn't have ranked this high, but nonetheless, we're gonna continue. Actually, we're not gonna continue, because it's time for a water break. Because, boys, we got through the B tier. Cheers to that. <laughs> Water went down the wrong water pipe. And now I'm choking, don't mind me. Don't you love it when that happens when you're just trying to drink something and your body decides, hey, let's choke. Okay, I think we're good now. It's time to move on to the 39A tier. Yes, I cannot believe I'm saying 39 in A tier, which is crazy to think about, but it just shows that Bluey is that good. Starting with the 21 low B tiers. Starting now, with number 61, Easter, aka the season 2 finale to Bluey. And honestly, if you're just a kid watching this episode, then there's probably not too much to note about this episode. But as an adult like me, though this scene how Easter Bunny forgot Bluey Pico, but in reality, well, I guess spoilers, but Easter Bunny is real. I know, shocking. And said it's like Chili and Bandit forgetting, you know, Bluey and Bingo for Easter, which is kind of sad if you think about it. But hey, at least they make it up with this episode by going on a scavenger hunt. But hey, if you like scavenger hunts, then you're gonna love this episode of Bluey. But hey, I personally did. I do enjoy myself a good scavenger hunt. And other than that, there's nothing else too great to know about this episode. Except for the beautiful animation at the very end when, when they get the chocolate bag. That was pretty cool. Yeah, other than that, I didn't enjoy it. For those curious, it was ranked number 48. I'm glad. I'm glad it's ranked that high. And now I scream. Now this one might have some conflicting opinions. I don't entirely know for sure. But for me personally, I just rank it so high because of how unintensely hilarious this episode is. The whole, you know, them getting ice cream just because Muffet got an ice cream. And then seeing the chaos that occurs when they're not able to share a lick of each other's ice cream. And then it turns into an orchestra music playing as they're trying to lick each other's ice cream on Spade around, which was hilarious let me tell you <laughs> then they come in around to the end and they'd be like well tough luck that your ice cream melted too bad that's a life lesson for you and then Bluey'd say one of my most quotable lines that I love to quote from the show I don't want a life lesson I just wanted an ice cream <laughs> oh my god I love it is it that good no not really but to me 
I love this episode just because of how because of the chaos that ensued and how much it made me laugh. Although I will say tiny nitpick, I do can't believe Bandit actually gave the ice cream to the kids. That was kind of crazy to me. We kind of showcased the life lesson to them, but also it kind of also fit with the fact that there is no life lesson. They just wanted ice cream. Don't think too much about it. I mean, I was curious, it was ranked number 43, which, hey, I kind of agree with. Thanks for kind of agreeing with me, Bully Fest. But moving on to number 59, Stickbird. Oh, Stickbird was honestly kind of sad because of the fact that Bandit was sad. We don't usually get to see Bandit sad, which that was the interesting part to me because it felt like Bandit was a completely different character in this episode compared to past episodes, honestly. Because, you know, Bandit is usually like the uplifting, like having fun with their kids sometimes, each of the life lesson kind of guy. But this, it just felt like he was a really different character. And it honestly just made me question what what happened? What happened in between, you know, relax and stick bird to make Bandit feel this sad? I'm very curious. And seeing Bingo upset as well along with Bandit because the kids ruined Stick Bird unintentionally was also really sad. But hey, seeing that all come around and really showcasing Bingo how she was able to handle the Sandits and it coming along with what was happening earlier episode with them throwing that leaf thing or whatever it was was really wholesome. And yeah, just in general, life lesson for you. If you ever are feeling sad, just make it into the middle of the ocean. That's literally what this episode taught you. I sometimes do it myself. So there you go. It, it was close. My ranking and Bully Fest's ranking. 59 and 60. It was so close. Kind of crazy to think about, honestly. But what do I know, right? Actually, I do know. Because we almost did agree. But hey, I'm glad we almost did, Bully Fest. I'm glad we almost did. Maybe, hopefully soon, we'll see the one where I was perfectly in sync with Bully Fest. Hopefully we'll see that soon. But next up is Sticky Gecko. Sticky Gecko was interesting. <laughs> because with this episode, we kind of got to see a, a side of Chili, which I feel like we rarely see, especially in the first season of Bluey. And it was kind of nice to see Chili get a bit of a spotlight here. But along with that, it was also interesting to see because I don't know about you guys, but as a kid, time as a concept was not in my frame of existence just yet. The scene that played out in the episode of Bluey, seeing the chaos on suits for that was, it was painful to see, but it was also so incredibly awesome to see how Chili handled all of it. And seeing Chili be able to, despite all the chaos, and losing her cool just for a quick second, be able to collect herself and be able to teach Bui here a valuable lesson. Which firstly, I found to be pretty nice and wholesome. So yeah, for those gears, it was ranked number 76, which honestly, I was not expecting. I thought it would have been ranked a little bit higher. Granted, I'm glad it's on the deals in the first place, but yeah, oh well. <laughs> Next up on the list is Seesaw, aka Bandit being a to the kids just to teach them a lesson. And also to give Pom Pom here some spotlight, which is nice. It was nice to see Pom Pom get a little bit of recognition in this episode, because I feel like we barely get to focus on some of the other characters, or at least the ones outside of like Bluey's main school group. To see someone completely different come into the fray was pretty nice to see, at least to see with Pom Pom. And yeah, in general, well, there was nothing else too crazy about this episode I wanted to mention. I don't See, the banter with Bandit in the kids' playoff was pretty funny, I will admit. It's Bandit doing whatever it takes. Keep the seesaw down and all to himself was pretty funny to see. And for those curious, it was not on the tier list for Bluey Fest. For the top 100, Jeez, I need to stop saying tier list. Which shocked me because I thought it would have been. I thought it would have been on Bluey Fest, but I guess not. Maybe I see something that the members don't see. I don't know. But yay, we get to talk about TV stuff. If you know me, or what I've been mentioning throughout this entire stream, I love the unique storytelling. And this episode, that is a great example of that. Because using the TVs, see the kids have fun and try to figure out where Coco is, was really cool and creative in my opinion. It get to see the little side we saw, like as the episode was going on, like seeing like, God, I forget the Bulldog's name. The Bulldog's dad meeting up with the three, twin brothers mother just them beating up was pretty nice you know just like small details like that i really appreciate it and just in general i don't think this episode is that great but it is still pretty good in my opinion just because of that unique storytelling and it's ranked number 40 which is kind of close but not too close to my ranking but yeah, i'm pleased we kind of agree bully press like i'm glad we kind of agree curry quest now i think if you're just like a regular 
train up Louie. Then you'll probably just think this episode was good and then move on. Or you may like this episode a lot more because of some of the unique stuff they did. But for me, I personally really like this episode because of how they used the hero's journey. Which, if you don't know what the hero's journey is, it's a storytelling structure used in a lot of like film and TV and hell, even YouTube, where they basically, the hero goes on a quest as like they did in this bully episode. They face some conflict and it all turns about in the end with them growing just a little bit more during that entire cycle. And we saw that play out that I thought it was very clever. Some parts of it that I thought was really cool. And especially the most clever part of this episode that I really enjoyed was how they face when they were facing against the bird. I really appreciated how originally, you know, it was brought up like, hey, you just need to stare them down and you know, you'll be fine. But once you know you're walking backwards, you can't really look at them, so you have to kind of run. But them learning from that, and then due to all the face paint that happened earlier, once they head back again. Again, they learned from that and so when they turned around they had you know the face paint on the back but with the face oh my god well this is very creepy don't get me wrong it was also very smart of bingo to have this happen and i just appreciate smart storytelling like this and of course obviously if like it's was playing out here them hugging out at the barium was also very wholesome so yeah this is rank number 45 only 10 away which Honestly, hey, I kind of agree with that. You can kind of agree with me, Bluey Fest. And here we go. This is a better Blue Bingo Center. Blech. This is a better Bingo Centered episode, in my opinion. There we go. Because obviously, I just thought it was very wholesome to see these two interact after the whole, you know, like, if you already know what I'm talking about, why I find these two wholesome, you know why I like this episode so much. If you know, you know. But yeah, I just thought it was also bringing that message of, hey, baby, keep, you know, the bugs alive and don't try to squish them. Because, you know, keeping the bugs alive can lead to some beautiful things. Yeah. <laughs> God, my brain was kind of shutting down there for a second, but yeah, I just really like this episode because of the interactions with these two, and I thought it was incredibly wholesome. Yeah. And believe it's kind of great. They ranked it like 11 lower, but it's kind of like still similar, which hey, I'm happy for. Oh man, relax. Do I have a lot to say about you? Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me, personally, I have such a hard time trying to relax. So this is a VTuber model, because I feel like no matter what I do, I just cannot fully relax. I always feel like I have to be working or doing something and not be lazy. Even though when sometimes I finish my work for today and I get to relax, I can't because of my brain just being dumb like that and seeing chili also struggle with that. I honestly kind of resonated a lot with her because of that. But also to see that all turn around and seeing how like Bingo and Bluey are relaxing here, how they were able to use to do it, and Chili then taking notes and then she's able to relax by just going with the flow. I mean, at least for me personally, that showed me like, hey, maybe all you need to do to relax is just take it all in and just going with the flow, you know? I just personally really liked this episode because of that. And I do hope we get to see more episodes kind of delve into like no, stuff that may be kind of more relating. You know, relaxation. It's, I mean, the kids teach the parents sometimes, you know, stuff that probably they haven't learned themselves. Like another episode that we'll be getting into later on. And for those curious, who's ranked number 44. Not only nine away from my ranking, but hey, I kind of agree with her. Kind of agree with me, Bluey Fest. And now, housework. Remember when I was talking about I want more episodes where the parents are learning stuff from the kids. This episode is a perfect example of that. And I really like this episode because I don't know about you guys, but for me, it is sometimes really hard to just like start working on something or get motivated to do something. It's seeing, you know, the parents also struggle with that. That's very relatable. Or I feel like that's relatable to anyone really. But then once they see and take notes from the kids of how they're making it fun and so they're able to get it done faster than they did. And then them taking notes of that at the end of the episode where they're, you know, able to, you know, like clean the house and stuff like that by just having fun it was really nice to see and i feel like a lot of parents are going to take note of this or hell anyone that's an adult really or hell even the kids are going to take note of this or but they have to clean or just do any sort of housework or hell even just regular work which i really appreciate and for those curious it barely made bluey fest it barely did at number 98 which shocked me honestly but i can also kind of see why some people wouldn't rank this episode as high but for me i just think the message here is why i rank it so high and now dad baby if you didn't know this episode of bully existed i would not have blamed you because it doesn't know though it is banned on disney plus you cannot watch this episode of bully i had to 
create an Amazon account and buy the episode myself in order to watch this just for this tier list. You can thank me later. Honestly, I kind of wish this episode was not banned because not only is this episode just really funny, seeing how, you know, how a birth is played out or them, you know, literally giving birth and experiencing that circle and be able to, you know, understand Chili's perspective of, you know, having a baby. <laughs> oh man, that was, that was insane to watch, but also very funny, but also pretty cool to see. And dude, shot of quote unquote babies for bingos more than just fan it, seeing the beautiful bingo that popped out and the animation gets all beautiful and just nice just ah god i love the moments where they just switch up the animation and make it so beautiful i love it i love it to bits that episode looks a little too sus and traumatizing for kids kids can handle anything okay it was released on australia with high praise okay calm your tit if australia can handle it america can handle it <laughs> america <laughs> and disney plus can handle it as well disney plus stop being an oversensitive it released this episode to Disney Plus, damn it. Release it, you cowards! And for those I was curious, like I said, it's ranked number 34. So clearly people love this episode. So I don't get why this is, you know, banned on Disney Plus. Again, unbanned it, you Disney oversensitive Just Release this episode to your service, damn it. Hey, it's been a while. Hope you didn't miss me too much. But I just wanted to really quickly and say that Luckily for you, you don't actually have to buy this episode now if you are in America and we're looking for a way to watch it. You can now just watch it on YouTube because Little Source decided Disney. We're just gonna upload it to YouTube for free. And honestly, I love it. Because now people are gonna be able to experience this episode and not have to like buy it through Amazon Prime like I did in order to watch it. You can just watch it on YouTube right now for free, which I highly recommend doing. Please stop this video right now and go watch the episode because it is hilarious. But after you watch the episode, all that, go ahead and come back to this video because now it's time to get into the top 50. Moving on to now the 50th episode, and now we move on to top 50. There we go. And to start off the top 50, we have Mini Bluey. Oh man, Mini Bluey. This, if there was an episode to create cursed images from, this is that episode. It has created so many cursed images that have come out of the entire show. Because, let's see here, we got Bingo here, colored as Bluey, which is so uncanny. And then we see Bluey colored as Bingo, which was also uncanny. But also seeing them two try to act like each other and just pointed out everything about each other everything about their characters was pretty funny but also as cruel as it was seeing bandit kind of be like man i wish it could stay forever when bluey turned to bingo and obviously bluey being hurt by that which honestly and it's kind of a move. Wish he didn't say that. I wish he didn't try to, you know, double down on him. That was an even bigger move. But I mean, hey, it turned out well in the end. And, you know, at least Bandit got his come up with Bingo scaring the ever living shit out there. Which, let me tell you, originally there was part of this episode that was censored on Disney Plus or like edited out of Disney Plus. And honestly, this is one of the few times then I'm glad Disney Plus actually like cut down on something because it actually made the reveal of how Nigo looked when they jump scared Bandit much more funnier in the process. Or at least to me it was. But yeah, overall, this episode is just chaotic, but I love it for that reason. And it's a pretty fun and memorable episode because of that. And for those of you guys, it's ranked number 35. So clearly people really enjoyed this episode, which I can totally see why it's ranked number 35. I disagree a little bit, but just by a little bit, you know? I can definitely see why it's ranked as high as it is on Bluey Fest. But moving on, the Christmas Swim. The better Christmas episode from Bluey, in my opinion. Mostly this episode was just pretty nice to see uh, actual Christmas play out. Or like, you know, what happens after Christmas. And see, you know, the frick, I forget the doll's name. But see the doll go through everyone in the healer family. See the chaos and soon that was pretty fun and enjoyable to see. Wasn't anything special, but it was pretty cool to see. But I will say, seeing Husky and Chris, Uncle Rad and Frisky, there we go. Seeing them in an episode and then as boyfriend and girlfriend which shocked me was really awesome i'm glad they were able to hit it off well and i am very excited for that wedding episode by the way i'm gonna mention that later on but i'm very excited for that episode but yeah and then seeing that wholesome moment of just like hey well they basically have been rough at first but give them a chance for press to be just from personal experience i thought was also really cool and yeah just in general i just really liked this episode it's not anything too terrific but i enjoyed myself nonetheless those curious 
It was ranked number nine. Ow. Personally, I don't get it. I don't get why this episode is ranked number nine, or at least in the top 10 in general, but I'm glad people liked Christmas Swim. It's definitely a better episode than the original Christmas episode, but I just don't think it's that good, personally. Moving on though, to the quiet game, aka I absolutely stand Alfie and if anyone else hates on Alfie, just know I am 20 seconds away from your house. I will attack you if you diss on my boy Alfie, okay? I love Alfie. And even despite from all the Alfie stance out there, which I am definitely one of them, I once again love the creative storytelling here of just playing bingo being silent sometimes you just don't need dialogue sometimes to just create a good episode and obviously we're gonna a bet another episode later on it's gonna show a great example of this we're gonna get to that episode later so honestly i cannot believe bandits got karma like into karma that quickly when it came to you know wanting Bluey Bingo to be silent. And someone's kind of crude, but also very f deserved. It was nice seeing that all play out. It leads to Alfie's success in the end. And Bandit learning the valuable lesson as well. I enjoyed it. There you go. Which, for those that are curious, this episode was break number 96 on Bluey Fest. Oh my god, it almost did not make it in. But I'm very glad it did get added to Bluey Fest. Even if it was just barely. I think it should be ranked higher, personally. But hey, that's just me. And with that, we move on to the extra touches of Uncle Randy Pesky, yeah? If you do not know these two, trust me, once you watch this episode, you will love them. Despite their only, like, new appearances they have gotten, I love these two, man. Back and forth, duo, just in general, and just seeing them be able to, like, work together and, you know, kind of at each other's throats for 70 people, but they turned into, into a nice, loving relationship, which will then turn into the wedding episode later, which I know I mentioned it last time when I mentioned these two, but I seriously cannot wait for that wedding episode, dude. You have no idea how excited I am for season four and that episode to come. Just saying. I cannot wait for that episode of Bluey. And now my mind is on the blink. I just love these two, and I just think them being loving and caring was very nice. And yeah, I just really like this episode overall. Surprisingly, my breaking with Bluey Fest is only five away. That was shocking to me. And I'm really glad that in Australia kind of agree. We're really close. So hey, Australia, I'm glad we could reach an agreement. I'm glad we could. Next up on the list is Granddad. Oh man, this episode was deep. This episode was deep. I mean, just seeing, you know, the grandpa, or granddad in this case, sorry, wanting to, you know, not relax and just try to live out his life as much as he can while he still can was honestly kind of sad but also i feel like it was also very realistic in a way you know what i mean and it kind of hit home because of that and especially with chili obviously wanting her dad to relax because if not then you know he'll be gone and chili says she still needs him but oh that hurt the soul right there when she said that my goodness but seeing that all come around into a very nice ending and hopefully a happy future with them the being however long did they live was really nice I, it's just this episode's wholesomeness was off the charts but besides the wholesomeness this episode isn't that good in my opinion but i think it's still a great episode of bluey regardless and for those that are curious it was ranked number 26 which for me was 20 away from my ranking well i can kind of see why it is ranked at number 40 uh, or sorry number 26 Firstly, I think it should be ranked a little bit lower, but hey, that's just me. What's my favorite episode of Bully? That would spoil the number one ranking. You're not getting me to spoil jack sh I'm not spoiling anything. But next up we have Cafe. Oh my god, I love Cafe. And when I say love, I mean I love Cafe, man. The wholesomeness from this episode was off the charts. See? God, why must I forget their names? Why am I so bad at remembering names? Don't you hate it? I don't know if I'm the only person that does this, but for me personally, I hate the fact that I cannot remember names that well. I hate that. I hate that. Back to what I was saying. The story progression of seeing... I should probably be more chill in my reactions. But seeing the progression of Betty, you know, just kind of just knowing the, you know, dad of the other child. But then seeing that blossom into a kind of like acquaintances of them actually becoming legitimate friends, all of them. And then seeing the absolute wholesomeness of, and, you know, in the Father's Day episode, perfect. And seeing them still be friends afterwards was so freaking awesome. Fuck! 
I loved it. And it pulled on my heartstrings a lot. But besides from that, this episode's obviously not that crazy in comparison. But for me personally, I still love this episode. I very much still do. I love it a bit. And for those curious, it was ranked number 49. It was just a few off. Just a few off. Which shocked me. But honestly, I'm glad we, we pretty much were in agreement, Willie Fest. I'm glad we could be in agreement. I'm glad we could be. So moving on, we are now going to talk about the pool. Oh, the pool, man. The pool. The pool was such a nice episode, man. And the whole, well, not wholesomeness, but there's honestly, like, in comparison to some of the other episodes, really just not too much to write home about this episode. But I think what I personally really like about this episode was the message of, while you may not like the boring stuff, the boring stuff is needed. And to me personally, I feel like that is a lesson that needs to be hammered in to people's brains much more especially my brain let me tell you as hard as it is sometimes to do some of the you know boring stuff at times and to bring the boring stuff sometimes it really is needed honestly it really is needed but seeing that showcase in the hilarious way this episode that go to the pool as a simple premise like that which is Again, brings back my point of turning something simple in concept and adding much more substance to it to make it memorable. It's what I do really like about Bluey. And what I do really like about Pool with that adolescent of, hey, as much as you might not like the boring stuff, you do sometimes kind of have to do it. I mean, that focus here was really awesome. I really like that. And the music specifically in this episode, oh my god, the music. It's this music, man, is some of my favorite music from the soundtrack of Bluey in general, especially in season one. Like seriously, did the composer of Bluey make some banger soundtracks, if you did not know? The soundtrack in Bluey is a f***ing banger if you're not listening to it. Please listen to it if you can. It is really good. But for those curious, it was ranked number 37. Again, pretty close to my ranking, which hey, once again, I'm glad we're starting to reach an agree agreements. The, the, what the f*** did I just say? Agreement! Really fast. I'm glad we can reach an agreement. I'm very happy about that. With that, we now move on to number 43. Takeaway. Oh man, honestly, this episode I just watched before I started doing the stream. Just to kind of like re-remember everything before I started the stream. Hey man, if this episode showcased me anything was to... A. Just, if they don't have the spring rolls, just leave it behind. Because then you won't have to deal with your kids being crazy kids. So secondly, how much could go wrong just in a matter of five minutes with the kids? Which was shocking to me. But also that added message at the very end. Kind of hitting home of like, hey, you only have all flowers are blooming, but kids never get to be young again. Do you only have one chance? Oh man, that hit home. I barely realized that and decided, you know what? And we're gonna have fun because this is your last moment to be, you know, a kid. It's your only time to. But honestly, it was pretty wholesome to see. Really appreciated that. But other than that, there's nothing else too crazy to take away from this episode. Or take away. Ah. And yeah, I just, in general, just really like this episode. For those curious, it was ranked number 28. I'm Bluey Fest. But hey, I can kind of agree with, but also kind of disagree with. But hey, I am glad it is ranked pretty highly. Or at least looked at pretty highly. And then the beat. Oh man, the beach. Honestly, the beach episode was just such a vibe. There's nothing even like too crazy to mention about this episode. It was just a vibe. Seeing Bluey just walk out on the beach and encountering some crazy stuff while doing so. And facing their fears, which was pretty cool. And also seeing Bluey be able to understand why her mother does enjoy just going walking out by herself. Now I said after seeing that for herself was pretty cool and wholesome as well. And yeah, just in general, I just love the wholesome vibes in this episode. I really did. And for those curious, it was ranked number 70, which honestly kind of shocked me a bit. I know I keep saying that I'm shocked. I should probably keep like a counter or something how many times I say I'm shocked by something. There was a whole entire Bluey live performance where I was. Dude, invite me to that. Please, please invite me to that. And yeah, honestly, I disagree with Bluey Fest. I do wish this episode was ranked a lot higher. And moving on to the next episode, which is Beverly. Oh man, this episode is honestly hilarious. 
because as sad as Bingo was not being able to go to Chloe's party, but seeing that turn around and Bingo's like, you know what, I'm gonna have my own fall and causing nuance to the entire family. Oh man, was that hilarious. I loved it. I love it when the episodes are just like, you know what? We're just gonna pause chaos for no reason and giving Bingo finally justice after all the nuances that happen to her sometimes it was awesome. And yeah, just in general, this was an episode that just in general got a lot of kicks out of me, a lot of laughs. And I thought the was there a lesson in this episode? I'm kind of questioning it now. Was there a lesson in this episode that I'm just forgetting? But hey, what do I know? Hey. I actually do know the lesson now re-watching this episode. The lesson I personally took away was that even though sometimes you'll unfortunately miss out on some stuff, whether it's because of like monetary reasons, because of like plans already being made, or however that may be. But then all honestly, that's completely fine because now you get to make up your own fun. Which hey, sometimes that's even better than the original plan you had. You never know. We'll just have to wait and see, right? At least that's what the sign taught me. Alright, with that, let's continue on with the video. Yeah, just in general, I really like this episode. It was ranked number 93 on Bluey Fest. Ow! This episode is great, man. Why is this episode ranked so low on Bluey Fest? I'm glad it's added to Bluey Fest. But why isn't it ranked higher, man? Why not? And with that, that concludes the low tier. The low A tier ranking. There we go. And I'm now going to quickly give myself a water break. And you should as well. Hydrate or die rate, as I would say. There we go. And with that, let's move on to the 18 high A tier. These are the episodes that were honestly very close to get into S tier. But for me, I decided not to because I just don't think they're that good to be deserving to be in S tier. They may be great episodes of Bluey, but they're not incredible episodes, which is where I put all the S tier stuff. Let's go ahead and start the 18 high A tiers with Basie Talk. I've said this before and I'll say it once again. I love me some <laughs> creative storytelling. And I will clap as much as I want this. But seeing the chaos that Muffin is great. No, I don't know about you guys, but for me personally, I'm a Muffin lover, not a Muffin hater. And seeing the chaos that ensued with Muffin, oh man, it was off the charts. And seeing the creative storytelling just through an app was honestly pretty cool. Not gonna lie. And seeing the parents of Uncle Stripe and I'm forgetting her name. Seeing them coming together in agreement after originally being in disagreement with the parents themselves, seeing them come together into an agreement to try to stop Muffin and see them work together was pretty cool to see at the very end. But let's be honest, the only reason I ranked this episode so high was because of socks here. They're an adorable thing but drawing all the flowers. I have a sock stand and I sincerely hope soon to get a sock centered episode very soon. We do not have enough stuff featured Socks. We have enough that features Muffin, but not enough that features Socks. Can we please get more stuff with Socks, please and thank you, besides that one short. If we can, that'd be great. For those curious, it was ranked number 15, which showcased me like, hey, a lot of people also really like this episode, which I'm happy with. But in general, I decided not to rank it as high just because seeing the phone fall into the pool was hurtful. And while, you know, I am glad they were able to figure out the whole parenting stuff, I think this episode probably would have been a little bit better if they were able to stop Muffin completely be able to put her in timeout as they would have anyway. But yeah, moving on to Fruit Bath. Fruit Bath was honestly a really nice episode of Bluey. And it's one of the first episodes of Bluey as well, which was very interesting. <laughs> Seeing Bluey wanting to become a Fruit Bat and, you know, antics that came because of that. And obviously we got the funny bit of Bated playing this game with this kid, which was hilarious. But the main reason I do rank this episode as high as I do is because of... God, I love this segment so much. The dream sequence Bluey has where she's just flying around like a food bat, having a grand old time. And that the music that plays as well is so good. I just love the music this episode so much, especially the dream sequence. And yeah, those two main points are why I have this episode ranked so much. If it wasn't for that stuff, I probably would have ranked it a little bit lower. There you go. For those curious, it was ranked number 54. I just shocked me a bit. And then next up, speaking of beautifully done episodes, next up is The Creek. Oh man, I love The Creek. I honestly love this episode just because of, at least for me, how beautiful The Creek is. The Creek itself feels like its own separate character 
and I love it. Seeing the different types of animals and the beautiful music that flows along with it, along with the beautiful animation with the coloring and the movements and just, oh, so beautiful. And not gonna lie, it almost made me want to go outside, which was shocking to me because at least for me, I'm not a guy that I usually like staying inside, but this episode almost made me want to go outside. Which if you watch this episode, you'll probably understand why I'm saying this as well. But yeah, in general, I love this episode. But if I'm being real, I don't think it's as good to be S here because besides from all the beautiful creek stuff, it's just a regular episode of Bluey. But yeah, I do love the creek regardless. And I think it's a great episode of Bluey. Calm down, Google Slides. And the other beautiful thing about this episode is that with Bluey Fest, we agreed hand in hand that it should be number 38. I finally found a ranking that be on in Australia basically go head in hand and agree with Foley. It's ranked number 38 in the top 100 and I am so happy about that. I finally reached victory with Australia. Let's go! This is the only time I'm ever going to be in literally the same wavelength as Australia slash Bully Fest and I couldn't have been more happier. I'm glad it at least happened just once. But next up is Muffin Cone. If you do not know about Muffin Cone. Oh man, let me tell you about Muffin Cone. Muffin Cone, at least for me personally, this felt kind of cruel to Muffin in a hilarious way, to be fair. But the only reason they were kind of cruel was to teach a very valuable lesson that I feel like both the kids and adults can learn. Since sometimes we kind of do stuff that we just can't control. The thing we can't control with Muffin, so okay seeing that he can, not he, she cannot stop sucking her thumb. Sorry, I mispronounced there, my apologies. But also, Trixie, that's her name. Jesus, Trixie. And Trixie trying to control, you know, her eating habits, but clearly breaking and, you know, eating all the chips. Um, I swear, I swear, Chili must have done that on purpose. She had to have done that on purpose, which, trust me, very smart move, Chili, but also, wow. Trying to teach on Trixie a lesson, god damn. But even despite all of that, seeing Muffin and the kids be able to work around the cone into something very beautiful is also very awesome to see. It's so kissing like, hey, even if originally something, you know, is kind of bad, you could turn it something into a positive, which I thought was also a very beautiful message to add along with the message of, hey, you sometimes can't control stuff, but it's so much in have to face consequences because of that unless it's something that is kind of does need to be controlled like this example for me personally i have the urge to just grind my teeth constantly i don't know why but i can't control it similar with lip biting i bite my lower lip constantly and i cannot control it but this episode in a way kind of showcased me hey you don't need to feel bad about that sometimes you just can't control stuff and i really appreciated that and for those curious it was ranked number 69 ah! But also, I can kind of see why it's ranked a little bit lower. But well, at the same time, I think this episode should be ranked a lot higher. But come on. It's Muffin Cone's great, alright? Come on. And then next up is Exercise. Now, honestly, this one could be due to recent... 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 But this episode releasing recently, there we go, is why I have bias towards it. But at least for me, I think this episode's great. Now, I will say, this episode did get a little bit of controversy. I was like kind of unwarranted. People were overreacting over a certain part of the episode. And because of that, it got cut out of the episode, which to me, when I actually watched the censored clip that got cut out, it's bullshit. People need to calm down. Bluey is not trying to attack you in your weight. Calm down, the internet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down past me. Please, take a chill pill, for Christ's sake. Looking back on this clip, yeah, I will admit, I was a bit harsh. Trust me, I do still think, like, the internet in general did kind of overreact a little bit towards this scene. But looking back on the clip, I can definitely see why and understand why some people were mad about the clip. Trust me, Bluey still wasn't, like, trying to attack your weight or anything. But honestly... Even without the clip, the episode's still fine as is, and it wasn't really needed anyway, so... Yeah, I don't know. Just the whole controversy behind it is weird. Can I just say that? The whole controversy in general is just kind of weird. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to say, yeah, it was a bit harsh. Sorry about that, but eh, what can you do? Well, with that, let's go ahead and continue on to why I think this episode is still great, though. Just saying. 
People need to calm down. Bluey is not trying to attack you in your weight. Calm down, the internet. <laughs> if anything, what I really liked in this episode was, again, the creative storytelling of, you know, obviously the game of Big Little Bluey be played. But what I especially loved was how they were able to incorporate their play with Bandit's workout. See, Bandit get a legit good workout by just letting the kids do their game with, you know, the whole, like, Ah! And that's fake! <laughs> like, for example, doing the whole elevator and having Beta try to lift up Ingo and Bluey was a good exercise. Obviously, do doing some. Is it head ups? Or. It's not push ups. Is it like. Oh, is it sit up? Doing the sit ups? And, you know, just them having Bluey and Bingo having a casual conversation was pretty creative. And my favorite part workout was either the roller coaster where they were on a quote unquote roller coaster but it's just bang it's making them around getting some good exercise and as well seeing them play i believe it's just like ping pong right and having bandit beat ping pong so they could run back and forth was honestly really great to see i really liked the creative storytelling the creative ways they did the workout that was the main reason why i really liked this episode give it up for day four yippee yippee yeah don't i don't know how we reached day four lab don't question it you just move on with your day and for those curious it was not breaked at all on bluey fest how seriously how honestly i thought this would have been ranked maybe not highly but at least it would have been on bluey fest but it wasn't that caught me off guard because i really liked this episode but maybe that's just me maybe i see something in this episode that other people don't i don't know but i wish it was ranked on bluey fest just saying and now at number 35 we have the weekend. Okay, honestly, there's a specific reason why I have this episode ranked this highly, and it's not for the reason you think. I will admit that sometimes the animation can look a bit weird in this episode. In the grand scheme of things, this episode doesn't have anything special or kind of crazy that makes it super great. But for me personally, I have it ranked so high is because for me personally, this was the episode that made me continue watching Bluey past the original like 10 or so episodes I was going to originally just watch a Bluey because the episode going just fine as it is was pretty cool but nothing in the past episodes as well kind of shocked me besides from episode, episode one which we'll get into later and just seeing the moment where Bingo sees the leaf bug which is an actual bug by the way I did not know this there's actual leaf bugs in real life that are both bugs that are camouflaged as leaves I did not know that and seeing the actual images reeked me the f out. They made it much cuter and bluey. I don't know how, but they did. And then just seeing the music slow down and seeing the animation turn into this beautiful, like, I don't know how exactly to describe it, but it's beautiful and I love it. The colors, the shading, the movements, and everything just looks so majestic and almost magical. It is so beautiful, man. Even after all of that, what held tight it all together, in my opinion, was seeing, even despite, you know, Ben, it was just, you know, being a father figure for Bluey, obviously. I need to see the lady, the leaf bug or whatever. But seeing Bandit still legitimately apologize to Bingo for not being there. Or, you know, what she was calling out to him. But honestly, I cannot believe he actually apologized for that. That was shocking. Also seeing him be able to turn it around with, hey, you want to know secret though with the, you know, statues and be able to cheer Bingo up just like that. Which showcased to me how good of a parent Bandit is. Holy sh**. And yeah, just in general, this episode was the one that made me continue watching Bluey past like the 10th episode mark. Because if this episode wasn't as good as it was, I don't know if I would have continued watching the rest of the episodes of Bluey if I'm being honest. I don't know if I would have. But this episode was so good that it made me want to continue. That reason alone, I have it ranked high for that reason. And it does upset me a little bit that it isn't on Bluey Fest at all. But I can kind of see why, to be fair. I can kind of see why this episode's not on here. I disagree and I think it should. Should be. Yeah, I'm not really gonna argue why. And oh boy, it's dumb. At least for this one, man, this episode hit me in the feels. Honestly, originally for the like first half of the episode, it was just a normal episode of Bluey. You know, a nice little wholesome of them just going on the car ride to the dump was all pretty nice. Bandit and Bluey joking back with each other about, you know, Bandit being the smartest guy in the world and the best man in the world and all of that. And then we get to seeing Bluey's reaction to Bandit wanting to throw away her drawings. And the pain Bluey showed when she saw that 
he was throwing away her drawings. Oh man, the, the, I don't know if I teared up, but I definitely felt horrible. I felt very bad for Bluey. And it may be incredibly his that bandit, let me tell you, for making Bluey that upset. Especially not even telling Bluey about this. Like he was trying to do this behind Bluey's back, which hurts even more. Like it kind of feels almost out of character for Bandit in a way. But even despite that like horrible moment and Bluey originally being like, you're not the best dad in the world because of all that, seeing Bandit being able to step up and decide, hey, you know what? I do agree. I am not the best dad and I am not the smartest guy in the world either and I don't know everything. And still, after that being willing to apologize and also explain why he is and helping Bluey be able to understand where she then also willing to throw away the drawing. That I feel like takes a special parenting skill. That kind of writing for f***ing Bluey was honestly really cool to see and that turnaround and that great parenting just made me appreciate this episode that much more. Outside of that though, it's just a great episode in general with some really heartfelt moments in there. For those here is Again, it's not ranked on Bluey Fest, which makes me upset. Like, why Bluey Fest? Why? This episode's great. Why didn't you rank it higher? The f <laughs> But hey, what do I know? Maybe this episode's just more catered towards adults than anything. Or maybe the kids are still upset after Bandit hurting Bluey like that. If that's the case, I can maybe understand more why it's not ranked that high, but there you go. But next up, we have Daddy Robot. Oh man, Daddy Robot. This was the fourth episode of Bluey I ever watched because it was the fourth episode that was released on Disney Plus. And oh man, watching this episode made me crack with laughter, man. I mean, I feel like that's kind of obvious just from like seeing the antics that go off just because Bluey and Bingo want to take a shortcut and not clean the room. And you know, it just backfiring completely with Bandit dead, making the kids go through a lot of crazy stuff just because Bandit actually being a smart robot at the moment or daddy robot sorry being smart and like you know what the only way I can keep this room tidy is by getting rid of you nasty maniacs and throw you in the bin despite how cruel it means it also makes a lot of sense and it was insanely funny because of that and seeing the antics that followed to try to stop daddy robot from doing so was awesome I remember that episode it's funny and cute yeah, exactly. Daddy Robot is just really nice. And seeing that all turn around where the kids are then understanding of, hey, we cannot take shortcuts with just like anything in general. And maybe we should, you know, actually do the stuff and not take shortcuts. It's pretty cool to see. But yeah, there you go. Because I was curious, it was ranked number 75. Granted, I think it should be ranked a little bit higher, but hey, I'm glad it's ranked on Bluey Fest in general as is. And next up we have The Doctor. Now, to be fair, The Doctor is just more of an episode that I personally love. And I can definitely see why some people don't really like this episode that much. But for me, I just love this episode so much just because of the crazy things The Doctor has to fix. Like, let's see here, uh, the cactus and the crocodile biting their ass, which, okay, funny. Bruh. Okay, yeah, this clip is gonna need a lot of context. For those of you that are just watching my channel for the very first time, back in the day, I did like a little mini series of sorts called like A F F F Q or Ask Five Friends Five Questions. And the first ever question I ever asked has kind of become a little infinite with my friends is asking what would happen if you fucked a cactus, which here's a clip of it right now. What would happen if you fucked a cactus? What would happen if you fucked a cactus? What would happen if you fucked a cactus? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did actually ask that, and not gonna lie, it's still kind of funny. Which is why when, you know, I was getting back to the cactus, my brain went, Oh, it would be funny if I referenced my old video just for the older fans out there that have been watching me for a while by mentioning, Oh, hey! Fucking cactus, ha ha ha, funny to AFFQ. You know, just to like, like a funny little jab, you know, for the funny and all of that. But it wasn't until like editing this video that I realized, wait a minute, I'm saying this about a child doing this. That is not okay. Like regardless of the context, that was just not okay for me to joke about at all. I just shouldn't have said that in the first place. And because of that, I just wanted to come in real quick and say, I'm very sorry that I even joked about a child doing that in the first place. It was not my intention at all to insinuate that, you know, a character in Bluey 
who was a child, was doing that. It was never my intention at all. I was just trying to make a funny little reference to my past videos as like a little funny. But regardless, I shouldn't have made the joke in the first place. And I promise, now on, never gonna happen again. I can promise you that. Again, I'm really sorry this happened. Promise, it's never gonna happen again. But look at that. Let's go ahead and continue on with the video, shall we? Barfing up hippopotamuses! <laughs> Which was also funny. And yeah, just in general, just seeing all the crazy things the doctor or Bingo this gets at the face, and then God, I'm forgetting her name, but seeing the dog that wanted to come in but not being able to get it because of the worst stuff that's happening to the other patient was both funny and kind of sad. But also seeing that all turn around where he's able to make everyone in the waiting room laugh with that tail trick, which honestly, how the f was he able to do that? That was very impressive. And it all turned around to where she is then able to go see the doctor it was pretty cool to see. Now that I'm saying this all out loud though, I can actually see myself in like maybe in the future making this episode a little bit lower. But for me personally, it's probably one of the four funnier episodes of Bluey and that's why I haven't ranked this high. But maybe on like a redoing of this tier list, maybe I would rank it like a little bit lower. And for those curious, it wasn't ranked on Bluey Fest at all, but hey, fair enough. I can see why. It's more just for me personally. Oh god, the show. Oh, f*** the show. I'm actually not gonna say much about this episode because I want you to watch this episode for yourself to see why I do like it so much. But to try to not spoil why, you know, I do like this episode so much, just in case you haven't seen it, I will say if you know and you have seen this episode, you know why I have it ranked so high. Because a certain thing happens in the show and then seeing Bandit and Chili holding hands as if they just saw something like potentially traumatizing happen to them and giving a slight hint for something like traumatizing to a potential parent. Oh, that baby stop and put my hand over my mouth and go, holy sh**, they actually went that far. I cannot believe they went that far. But even then, still seeing the show itself was pretty funny. It's seeing how Bingo was able to pick themselves up after everything, doing the whole like thing that Chili taught her was really wholesome. And of course, I ranked this episode as highly is because we got to see Bandit in a baby outfit. That, that's not the main reason why I have her ranked so high, but come on, that in particular got a really big kick out of me. I laughed really hard at that moment. And yeah, just in general, this is one of the better episodes of Bluey. And it's why I have her ranked in high A tier. It's a really good episode of Bluey, which makes me that much more it, it's not a bully fest. What the f I get it, this episode's more like something for the adults, I guess. But even then, I am shocked this episode is not ranked on Bluey Fest at all. I wouldn't maybe understand if it was ranked a bit lower on Bluey Fest, but not being ranked at all is what the f this is bullshit. And yeah, with that, that also means we're down to the top 30, which I'll be honest here, you might hate me for this, but I'm gonna stop here for today. I know, I know, but for me personally, I want to make sure I have the voice and all the energy needed to do the final top 30 episodes, especially for S tier. I want to make sure I am able to talk as much as I can about the last 30 episodes on this tier list. And so yeah, we're gonna stop here and I will see you on the final day of this ranking, which for the audience, it's happening right now. Welcome to the final, yes, final day of breaking every episode of Bluey ever made. Jesus Christ, I did not think it would take five days or four days if you don't count the third day. How the f did we get here? I originally thought there was just going to be this one huge stream and that was going to be it. How the f did this turn into four to five-ish streams? How the f But you know what? I just, oh God, there's the eyelash in my eye. Ah, f I don't know how the f that happened, but hey, I'm glad we all made it through it somehow. <laughs> all right. Shall we begin the finale of the Bluey tier list? Starting out with number 30, and then we're continuing on from there. Which means we only have to go through the final high A tiers, then just the S tiers. That's it. That's all we had to go through. With that, let's go ahead and get started on number 30 on this list, which is Rug Island. For me personally, I love Rug Island so, so, so much. And not gonna lie, this episode made me want to buy bug pens in real life. No, it's not rug pens. What am I talking about? Felt pens. This episode made me want to buy felt pens 
for real life. <laughs> to see the creative storytelling and see the creative gameplay that Bluey and Bingo using by using all these felt pens to basically recreate like different parts of life like the carrots, snakes, plants, fish, boats, you know, just like using the different felt pens I thought was really cool and creative of the Bluey team. And the case as well. But also seeing that storytelling of bandits coming up on this island and not really understanding, I want to say, like a kid's imagination. Because I feel like a kid's imagination is kind of complicated in some aspect. But seeing to be able to perfectly explain that, to showcase bandit understanding it and then coming all full circle, if the bingo gifts the bandit, him opening up, realizing it's everything, but it's just a tiny little pen, speaks volumes because it shows that he understood what. The kids were trying to like teach him in a way that the kid's imagination can be anything and literally everything which i thought was really cool it's just said that the only reason i have it ranked a tiny bit lower than some of the other episodes is because of the fact that technically speaking they did kind of promote stealing <laughs> because if you remember also in the episode when you know god why do i forget their names now but you know the neighbors come over and they're like hey can we have our ball back you know, because, you know, it's their ball. And their kids are like, no, this is ours. It came out to our land. It's now ours. Bitch. And then Bandit promoting it. <laughs> because, you know, like, I get it in terms of the story. But Jesus Christ, why do you, do you have to promote stealing of all things? But overall, the pros outweigh the cons of this episode. It's just, I would be at this if I didn't at least point that out. So there you go. Imagine if Gentle is just complex. Oh, it is. It is completely complex. And for those that are curious, this episode was ranked number 62 on Bluey Pets. Now, I definitely understand why it was ranked a little bit lower, and I'm not mad. I'm just a bit disappointed. <laughs> but yeah, overall, it's a great episode. But highly recommend. With that, we move on to Pirates, ranked number 29 for me. This episode was really great, and there's not really much to speak of because I think it's just a great episode that this episode speaks for itself and why it's good. But for me personally, I want to specifically talk about Bandit here because what Bandit goes through in this episode, oh my god, do I relate to it. For those who don't remember, when they were playing Pirates, Bandit, when he's, you know, playing the games with the kids and making all the weird noises, as soon as someone else comes around and looks at him weirdly, he did a really snaps and it's like uh what random noises was i making no i'm just playing nicely with my kids you know not really thinking much else of it you know like immediately as soon as someone says that he comes out immediately and i feel like for me personally that is a lesson that is underappreciated in the day and age where it feels like you could immediately change how you act within the blink of an eye as soon as someone's judging you that that can be hard to swallow and it's even harder to then come to terms with that and say you know what i'm not gonna let that deter me from with whatever i'm doing and continue to do what i'm doing regardless that's a hard thing to do but not only do i appreciate bandit doing but i also appreciate the show for showcasing i know at least for me personally i still sometimes struggle with that sometimes i will still like even though someone's like judging me like okay even though for me personally i've gotten better at you know not caring about what people think of me there's still a small part of it you know that i still have my motive of weaknesses sometimes hell and my friends also go through the same thing it is a universal thought but i think the episode showcasing that was really great that's why i specifically ranked it so high and which makes it really sad for me that this episode isn't ranked higher or is i even on fully fast now this is going to become a recurring fact throughout most of the high a tiers where most of the high a tiers are not on Bluey Fest, which is sad to me because I think these episodes are fantastic. But hey, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. Moving on to Asparagus, rank number 28. I love asparagus now i'll be honest this episode doesn't really teach anything like specific methods but okay it teaches you know manners but you know hey what a great episode to teach about manners good on you bluey good on you dude the reason i have this rank so high is because of how hilarious this episode is of all the episodes of bluey this is the one that's made me laugh out loud the most see the little like animation changes they do with each animal with chili fan and bingo changes the animals it's just gold man it is made me laugh out how the hardest out of any episode of Bluey ever I just find this episode hilarious and that's why I have it ranked so high other than that I just think the episode's good 
but the comedy in this one is why I have it ranked as high as I do. They just can't appreciate good episodes. Exactly. So to be fair, probably most of the people that were ranking Bully Fest are kids. So, you know, just, just take it with a grain of salt. I mean, see, I mean, even here, it was ranked number 32 on Bully Fest. So not all of, <laughs> not all of Australia's opinions are complete garbage. <laughs> but hey, I'm glad we sort of agreed, Bully Fest. I'm glad we sort of agreed. I'm glad we did. But moving on to number 27, Ragdoll. Now, I know some people would probably not rank this episode as high as I have, but for me personally, I just love it because of Wendy here. When it came to Wendy's character throughout the series, it kind of just felt like more like uh, she was mostly only really used for comedy, I want to say, and not really for anything else in particular. But here, she was given a lot of spotlight, and honestly, she became a badass in this episode, in my opinion. See, you know, the kids try to, you know, get their ice cream, but Eddie beats that story by pushing Bandit out of the house and Bandit not gonna lie throughout this episode was kind of a dick because I get it you know you want your know, teacher kids to lesson but at the cost of being a dick to them in some occasions when they clearly don't want to learn a lesson they just want the ice cream or when you know taking the money away from them when they found it fair and square when you probably forgot it is kind of mean but then seeing Wendy come along and teaching a much better way of how hey you should not be lazy in life by seeing her Lift Bandit off of the ground with her squats was so badass. Holy s***. And then at the end, but you know, she is inside the car. And Bandit's like, oh, well, I actually don't feel like, you know, driving you guys there. So tough this hits. And then see when it be like, okay, f*** you, b Pushing Bandit out of the way was not only so hilarious, but just made me automatically respect her, man. She is a woman that deserves respect, and I love her for it. This is the episode that made me respect Wendy, and because of that, but I wasn't expecting to, that's why I have it as ranked as high as I do. Oh, and of course, the animation with Bluey tries with the ice cream was phenomenal. I loved the visuals in that. Not better than that, it's a good episode. I highly recommend. And that's why it makes me so sad that it is not ranked up. Bully Fest! God damn it! God damn it, Bully Fest. Again, why are you not breaking these high? Why, are you not, why aren't these on the list in the first place? Ragdoll is great! Why don't you break it high, mother f***er? But with that, we move on to number 26, Squash. But this one, I can definitely see why some people may not immediately connect with this episode, because for those who don't know, Squash is actually a local Australian sport. I did not know that, but thanks to this episode, I did some research and discovered it myself. Pretty cool. And it kind of makes me want to try it a little bit, not gonna lie. I just gotta find where to play Squash in North Carolina. In America, baby! But yeah, again, this is one of my favorite things about Bluey, that they take a simple concept, just playing squash and then they twist it and add so much more to it that it makes it such a good episode yeah exactly i also love this episode trust me i do and we're gonna get into that now now i originally see that it be kind of a it's kind of hurtful but not gonna lie because look for, at least for me personally i'm an only child what seeing the way bandit was treating stripe and seeing the way blue was treating bingo oh man it hurt it hurt the soul and even afterwards even though you know bandit beat stripe and it's still with acting like it's but seeing bluey come to her dad be like hey can you try to you know be nice and let stripe win so bingo can also win but she's just trying to be good sister which was really sweet bandit's being like no, what are you talking about? And immediately, I'm like, <laughs> and obviously later, you know, but it gets its conductance, which is great. I loved it. It's okay, Super. I have a sibling and I felt this a lot. Okay, but though, from your personal experience, it is relatable. And just seeing Eagle helping out Stripe in any way she can, like, quote unquote, fixing him. Which, let's be honest, Stripe never needed to be fixed. But whatever. But then seeing Bingo, even though Stripe's like, hey, you should probably move to Bandit if you want to win. But Bingo's deciding, no, I wanted to see us win because Fixers will always be little sisters. It's Stripe then being like, man, that hurt the soul as well. And now I'm going to become a f***ing badass and destroy Bandit in the process. And oh man, was it glorious to see that. It was glorious to see Stripe beat the absolute s***. Yeah, Bandit. It's still being, you know, good sportsmanship at the end. It was just overall really great. In my personal opinion, this episode's kind of underrated because of that. There's a lot to unpack in Squash, even though it's just a simple concept of playing Squash. But because they added much more to it and added much more substance, it's great. And I love it. I know what it's being talked about because I have a sibling. Oh, really? Yeah. For those curious, it's not great. Oh, my God. 
Yeah. Okay, I know I said this episode was underrated, but why is it just not ranked? It's great! I know you're gonna hear me say that a lot with some of the rankings, but like, squats? Not on this list at all? When cricket is? What the f***? But hey, I don't know. Maybe I see something, and maybe the elders see something in this episode that I clearly don't. I don't know. But all right, with that, let's move on to number 25. That being escape. Oh man, do I love escape for one reason and one reason only. And it's because the animation here is stellar, man. It's such a simple art style, which is like, it looks like a kid's drawing. But they do so much with it. And the creative animation they did here, I just love. That's the reason I have it ranked so high. The rest of the episode is fine, as is. But the creative animation here is why I love this episode so much. And of course, I rank it so highly is because Jerry the butler is here. And Jerry is one of the greatest characters out of the entire show, hands down. We stand Jerry. We stand Jerry this house. And if you do not, get the f*** out of here. We will not tolerate any slander against Jerry in this house. You got that? There you go. That's why I love this game. It's just for the visuals alone. The rest of the episode, that was good. But for those curious, it was ranked number 39. Which, hey, not exactly in what my ranking would have been, but hey, I'm glad people do like this episode. So, hey, I'm glad we can kind of agree, Bluey Fest. I'm glad we can kind of agree on this one. But you know what? Let, let's ask Bluey. You know, we kind of been avoiding Bluey throughout this entire like series even though you know he's sitting right there just chilling and when she's the one you know the drawing all the stuff for that episode in the first place why don't we just ask bluey to tell hey bluey what do you think about this episode what do you think i agree bluey i agree don't you guys what do you guys think do you guys agree with bluey here as well do you guys agree with them I heard starts at the end Nico, do I need to have a conversation with you? Do I need to have a conversation with you, Nico? Just asking. All right, with that, let's, let's move on for now. Let's move on to number 24, Bob Bilby. Oh, man, dude. Honest to God, this episode was so close to getting into S tier. It was really close to getting in there. However, if I have to be honest with you, the only reason I don't rank it as high or don't rank it as tier and said high A tier is because for me personally, I don't really like episodes for their anti-technology instead go outside episodes. You know what I mean? You know those episodes where they're like, er, why are you just watching cartoons and television all the time? Go outside, play a game. I don't care. Just do anything else besides technology. Do you know what I mean when I'm talking about those episodes? Because for me personally, when that stuff happens or those like, you know, lessons are taught in like cartoons and TV shows and movies in general, I am just thinking myself the entire time okay but you're literally a cartoon show on disney plus where the goal of watching you is to keep you on disney plus and to keep you watching the technology and stuff in the first place why the f are you telling me to go outside when the goal of you being on tv is to make me continue watching technology it makes no sense. <laughs> Look, for me personally, I just don't really like episodes like that. However, I will say that this episode does a much better job than some episodes, which is why I have it ranked so high. Although I will say, Jelly was kind of a dick in this episode because, you know, they already did take the picture with the iPad. You know, they could have added that into the book and that would have been fine. But Jelly instead, you know, took pictures of them on the iPad at all times or watching technology or anything like that just to try to teach Louie Bingo a lesson and hurting Bingo's feelings in the process. Like, look, I can't try to teach your kids a lesson, but to me, that's making me raise my carrot finger. <laughs> it's making me question your parenting. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, maybe that's just me. Maybe that could just be me, though, honestly. I don't even say the one joke where, you know, Bandit pulls out the camera and then Billy on the bike is like, are you ready? And then they're just like, wow. And the Bandit just taking the picture of Chili. Oh, man, that got a solid laugh out of me for two minutes. Wait, I was wheezy when that happened. And seeing everything that came out afterwards after the whole, like, 
Hey, Raj, can you not right now? I'm trying to talk about a serious moment in Bluey, but yet here you are being loud as... I don't even know if the stream even heard that, but I know I did, and I wanted to call it out. But yeah, just in general, I love this episode of Bluey, but for me personally, I don't really like when this premise is used. It's better used in this than some other shows. Oh my god, this garage. You know, let's just let the garage continue. It's clearly, I don't have a say in my own stream. I don't have a say of what happens in my own stream, god are we gonna have a garage counter? No, because this is the only time it's happened in this stream, thankfully. And for those I was curious with Bob Dillaby, it's ranked number 64, which honestly, I kind of agree with. Now that I'm like, thinking about it, I'm actually glad I didn't rank this in S tier. And I kind of wish I now instead of ranked this a little bit lower into like maybe like low A tier or high B tier, like looking back on it and all. But hey, I still think this is a good episode of Blue Regard. I really do. And with that, we move on to the final A tier episode in this entire list with Sleepover. Oh man, this episode is great. But before we continue with anything, I have to ask, did you guys know that coconuts have water in them? Because I didn't. I didn't know that. But now that I do, it gets me excited to try a coconut, knowing that I'll be able to stay hydrated in the process. That's gonna be great. That's not the only reason I have it ranked so high. Another reason is obviously Sands. I cannot believe that Sands is in an episode of Bluey, but I love it. And it makes me feel kind of old with the fact that I was there when Undertale first released, and now seeing it referenced in like cartoons, now like older fans of Undertale that are now working on shows like Bluey, does make me feel a tad bit old, but hey. I'm just glad Undertale is getting the recognition it deserves, regardless. <laughs> but yeah, that's, those are not the only reasons I love this episode, man. Another reason why I love this episode is because of, you know, Bandit. <laughs> not Bandit. Muffin being a chaotic, tired gremlin in this episode. Because seeing the antics that Muffin, Bully, and Bingo were getting into just because of Muffin being tired. Oh man, was not only glorious, but was f***ing hilarious all throughout. When people are annoyed by Muffin, I point to this episode showcasing like, hey, Muffin isn't annoying. You're just a three-year-old kid, you know, just causing antics. And it's hilarious. But then I also rate this episode really high just because of how Bluey was able to resolve it all. Because while Bluey did, you know, get what she wanted by staying up late, it was at the cost of Muffin, you know, being extremely tired and cranky the entire time. Which is kind of f***ed up if you think about it. But then seeing that Bluey was able to then make up for it by then play one final game to then try to get Muffin to fall asleep. And then Chili obviously kind of be like, wait, is this another game? to keep you guys awake but then Bluey doing that wink and then Chili immediately realizing that she is trying to help her get Muffin to sleep holy sh that is amazing parenting having trust in your kid to be able to do that and not question a thing oh my god that is the type of parenting I wish I had as a kid holy sh that type of parenting exists where you could trust your kid like that how the f and can I please have it? Can, please, can I please have that skill to be able to do that? That would be great if I knew how to do that. And yeah, overall, this episode is so great. Which is why it upsets me so much that I wrecked this so hard. Like, I want to put this in S here, but I gotta be honest. But at the same time, it's like, dude, why didn't I rank this one higher? Because it is a really great episode. But also, to be fair, if I have to be honest, I don't think this episode is as good as some of the S tiers I have instead. Which is why it's in high A tier. But it could honestly f change to S tier. Do not get me wrong. Hell, I might change it to S tier after this stream. I don't know. But as of right now, it is the top of A tier. But hey. Yeah. <laughs> Can you see I'm conflicted with this decision? Because I'm like, A tier, S tier, I don't f know. But then, for those that were curious, it was ranked number 68. Only one away from 69. But me personally, I can definitely get why it was ranked a little bit lower. But at the same time, man, it's a really funny and great episode of Bluey. And I kind of wish it was ranked a little bit higher. But hey, it is what it is, right? Can't really do much of that. Well, here's BRP. How about you guys just pretend I'm funny in life so what, you know, the Bluey thing. The bluey plushie is saying, the that bluey plushie is obviously trying to cancel her. So, uh, what's he saying, chat? What's the bluey plushie saying? Oh my god, the bluey plushie is not telling them to stay hydrated. Oh my god, Super, Super, you won't believe it. Super, I got terrible news. Stay hydrated. That's the thing. The bluey plushie said that we shouldn't stay hydrated. Uh, excuse me? I kid you not. 
Fools. Someone Fools. in the chat heard it. Someone in the chat heard it. I believe them if I were you. Mm, I don't know about that. I mean, look at those evil eyes of saying don't stay hydrated. You what can do you see mean, it in evil eyes? Just say, just look at the four bluey eyes. I'm saying four because of the... I tell you, one of them is a menace. Sure, sure. All right, with that, we move on to the 22S tiers of the video. Yes, you heard me right, 22. It was that hard trying to, you know, put so many into A tier that I had to put some of them in S tier because they're that good they are just that good but all right with that let's do this here are the top 22 episodes of bluey starting out with magic xylophone now initially a lot of you might be confused as to why i have this one ranked exactly in s tier because some of you would probably say this doesn't deserve to be in the S tier. Uh, it deserves to be in like high B tier, maybe low A tier. In which to that, I would be like, yeah, I generally agree with you. However, there's one particular thing about this episode that makes it S tier in my eyes. And it's that it is a fantastic first episode of Bluey and a fantastic kind of like pilot of sorts to Bluey. Just think about it like this. When you first start watching the show for the very first time, that first episode you watch is basically like out all the groundwork and everything you need to know about the show itself that first episode alone has to not only grab your attention but also get you invested in it teach you everything about it it just has to like really make you want to continue watching because if it does not do that it's gonna be hard to continue watching the rest of the series so you gotta grab people's interest and this episode of bully does a fantastic job at that and the one moment in this episode that made me really sad that this show was not what I thought it was was when Bingo and Bluey were having that confrontation after Bandit froze Bluey. But you know, throughout the episode, Bluey was being kind of and you know, not sharing with Bingo. And antics occurred because of that. It also caused Bandit to, you know, get the xylophone back. But then after, you know, Bingo did free Bluey, Bluey was like, Hey, I'm free. Now let's go freeze Bandit. Give the toy back to me. Bingo decides, no. Freezes you. And then the music stops. It zooms in a Bluey and Bingo. And it gives a fantastic, kind of outright like, beautiful and serious and mature moment where Bluey is now kind of like venting to Bluey about how she is not sharing their turn with Bingo and it makes her sad. And man, when that moment happened, I legitimately froze the episode and then i just sat there for a solid two minutes because at that moment it made me realize oh shit, this is not your typical preschool show because originally when i first watched it i'm like i don't know i don't know but then that move moments right there it changed everything it made me contemplate everything i knew and that's why i love that episode so much because not only it made me captivated but it also it made me question everything i do which is great anything should make you sometimes question you know if you know everything you thought you knew about something and this episode did that beautifully and it seemed to obviously come together to you know defeat bandit with the water hose which can i just say they're wasting a bunch of water in that episode and it kind of makes me a bit furious but i can move past that just for this whole first episode man it's just a really great first episode of bluey and i'm just really glad this was the first episode i saw because this is the one that made me want to at least continue watching until episode six because episode six is when it made me want to watch the entire show episode one is what that made me want to originally continue watching past the first episode of course so there you go and for those curious this rank number 89 on bluey fest i can definitely see why it's ranked a little bit lower and obviously i'm not really bad and i just kind of understand the reason i rank it so high is because of you know personal reasons outside of the episode itself but yeah i just think it's a great episode of bluey regardless and for those that are looking to start bluey this is the episode i would recommend literally the first episode and with that we move on to fairy tale now let's be honest the only way they could have made this episode better was if shrek Somebody. came in <laughs> that's the only way they could have made this episode better i'm joking obviously but god imagine if they did do that that would be hilarious the real reason obviously i haven't break so high is because we got backstory with bandit which was cool but also seeing a side of bandit that we haven't seen before just be kind of a <laughs> you know before he was raising his kids all that at least as a child in the 80s he was a 
asshole. And originally, it was kind of sad to see Bandit beat it to Stripe, or Uncle Stripe, I guess some would say. But then, seeing it all kind of turn out with the whole Jinx curse, and seeing Bandit learn his lesson. Because originally, if that Jinx happened, if he was a nice guy, they probably would have just unjinxed him immediately. But because he was an asshole, it's like, you know what? We're just gonna take a step back. We're just gonna let you deal with it. Because you brought this upon yourself, Bandit. And Bandit really said, yeah, I do deserve it. And I was being mean and an asshole. It was honestly really sweet to see him change after all that. And also the way he meant to like, oh yeah, that as well. We're gonna get into that. But also see, you know, Bandit help Stripe out. And then, you know, Stripe could have broken the curse there in the episode, still would have been great. But him decide, you know what? Still f you, I'm not gonna say your name because I'm your brother. See Bandit proud of it because of that? That made me like the episode a lot more. It broke the normal story quota. I guess you could say. And obviously, of course, scene. Hypothetically, we don't know if it's true. Come on, we all know it's true. But you know, the fairy tale of seeing, you know, then Chili being the one to break the curse. It's seen. The scene that first interact was really sweet. But yeah, that's why I really like this episode. For those curious, it was ranked number 22. I was only one away from being exactly on the point. And the only reason I, it is only one more is because I wanted to have the pilot episode be the last one in S tier. If it wasn't for that, this episode would have been exactly on point with Bluey Fest, which is crazy to think about. But it's also, hey, I'm glad we agree, Bluey Fest. I'm glad we agree. That we now move on to the top 20, starting out with Randy Mobile. Now listen, to all you muffin haters in chat or watching the stream or watching the VOD or watching the video, I don't know who you are. I want you to tell me if you saw this as Muffin's redemption arc. <laughs> because, I mean, obviously Muffin was great as this. He didn't need a redemption arc, obviously. But seeing Muffin be a badass in here and standing up to the very crouchy granny here. Oh man, it was absolutely glorious. The only episode I love Muffin. Okay, see, there we go. We found our Muffin hater, guys. Yeah, to see Muffin stand up to that grouchy granny like that was really freaking cool to see. And also see, God, what is her name? Who was having the art sale? See her now get a backbone as well afterwards and now selling the, you know, everything for what it's worth after learning how Muffin did it. It was so great to see. And this is one of my favorite things they do in the show is when the kids also teach the parents and the adults something as well. Because obviously, you know, the parents are going to be most likely teaching the kids something. But there's still that occasional moment where the kids give something to the adults. And I love it when that happens, man. I love it. And to see that in this episode, oh god, it was glorious. I loved it. And for those curious, it was ranked number three. Like, not even like, oh, number 23, no, 13. It's top three, which is insane number three i love this episode do not get me wrong that's why it's an s tier but three what i mean i'm not gonna disagree it's a fantastic episode but three holy australia loved this episode apparently i mean i can't blame it it's great but wow that was unexpected so with that we now move on to the wagon ride oh this episode is just so wholesome but come on the real reason why I have it ranked so high is because of the little parody moment and it did with Bluey. Obviously, with, you know, they had a little argument over what Bluey wants to do versus what Bandit wants to do. Obviously, going with what Bandit wants to do because they're the parents. And obviously, Bluey be pissed about that. But instead of, you know, ignoring Bluey and moving on, Bandit decides, okay, I'm gonna be a parent and teach Bluey a trick that not only is great for us, it also teaches the entire of the world a great way because I don't know about you guys, but for me, I always had kind of impatience when it came to like adults talking to adults because I just wanted to just, you know, do fun kid things as a kid. And then seeing them resolve this issue that probably millions of kids and adults had within the span of two minutes with this great parenting trick. Dude, I legit paused my like video for like three minutes <laughs> three minutes this time not two minutes three minutes this time got to play they literally just solved this problem i had as a kid with this amazing parody tactic and they did it just casually what the <laughs> rest of the episode other than that was also pretty good but the reason i have it ranked as number 19 is because of that moment man being the moments of Danny being a great parent absolutely glorious and also for seeing bluey then figure out how to you know find your own fun it's also pretty cool there you go and that's why it makes me so sad that this episode is not even ranked 
on Boy Fest. I get it, you know, this episode is more of a adult-centric episode. Like, uh, the episode more for the adults than the kids. But come on, man, this episode's great! How dare you not have this on Bluey Fest's top 100? This is bullshit. With that, we move on to number 18, Duck Cake. Oh, man, Duck Cake. This one, man, this one will make you have you in the field. But let's just go over the entire episode as a whole first, real quick here. For this episode in particular, there was, you know, the whole cleaning lesson with it. But the way they did it at the beginning of the episode was kind of just, you know, your normal good episode of Bluey. Bluey now wanting to clean up the mess. Because, you know, cleaning is freaking hard. And Bannon having a hard time to come up with Marie's legit reason why Bluey should clean up. Trust me, I relate to that deeply because I was that kid that if I didn't technically need to clean up, then I wanted to have. I would just leave the mess there as is. And it would take a lot of convincing and stuff like rewards and stuff like that to get me to clean up anything. So trust me, I relate to Bluey a lot in this episode. But then once Bannon, you know, ruins the duct tape, and he has his moment of grief and the feeling defeat. And then Bluey recognizing that and deciding, you know what? Putting everything aside, let me just clean up this mess so to make my dad feel better. You know, that was really wholesome. But that was not the only wholesome thing that happened. Because then once, you know, Bluey helped up Bandit by trying to figure out what to do about the duck cake situation. And then Bandit seeing... Oh my god, I'm about to lose my mind because this moment's so wholesome. Bandit seeing that Bluey cleaned up the mess. And then Bandit being thankful in the process. And then seeing freaking Bluey's tail start to lag because it's just a wholesome moment of like, Oh, this is why you clean. Because it's just a nice thing to do. And then you feel good when you clean up because people recognize that that's a good thing you did. Oh my god! Oh my god, the wholesomeness of this episode, man, it was burying me in a hole, man. Then Bluey needed to, like, clean it up or something, my wholesomeness afterwards. Oh my god, I just loved it. Because, here's a fun story for you. In middle school, during, like, like after school hours, once I was noticing that my science teacher was having a hard time, like, picking up the chairs at the end of the day, because in my middle school, they would have, like, separate tables and chairs instead of just desks with the chairs inserted into them. And so she would have to, like, you know, pick up the chairs herself, which, you know, was kind of, I'm really sad, but, you know, I just know she was having a hard time. So, when we had them back to school, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just gonna come in and just clean the chairs up myself and put them all up for her. And from that moment on, for the rest of middle school, because she noticed that I was helping her out and she appreciated that I was being nice to her. Once that happened, every single day after middle school, I would go back into her classroom. Even when I graduated from that high school, by the way, I would come back and pick up those chairs for her because it was nice, such a nice and good thing to do. So yeah, that's why, why I personally make this episode a bit hard because not only did I relate to this, but I just think it's a great lesson overall because obviously you should clean up after yourself, but showcasing why you should clean, obviously besides from the fact that it's just something that you should, showcasing that people appreciate that and it's good to do so and you feel good doing it does a much better job of teaching kids to clean than any other episode of a kid's show I've ever seen. So that's why I have it ranked so high. That's why. For those curious, it was ranked number 27. But hey, I'm glad, I'm glad we sort of agree with each other, Bully Fest. I'm glad we sort of agree. Do I fully agree? Not necessarily, but hey, number 18, number 27? Not half bad. Not half bad. But now we move on to number 17, onesies. Oh boy, onesies, man. Hold up. <laughs> we, 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 need to, we need to collect ourselves for this episode. Honest to God, how the f*** does this episode of Bluey exist? Like, like seriously, because... In my mind, this episode should not even exist in the realm of reality because of, you know, the sensitive topic they did in this episode. Of, you know, obviously branding here, wanting kids, but not being able to have kids and dad messing with her for at least four years, I think. Oh man, that that's some heavy stuff that no other kid show I think would ever try to tackle. But this episode and Bluey decide to tackle it and I love it so much because of that. That takes guts to tackle. Especially in a preschool show, bear in mind. And honestly, that's not the only reason why this episode is so good, right? Like obviously they tackle something great. 
and they tackled something that honestly no one for kids so would probably ever try to dare tackle obviously that is one reason but another reason why obviously is because of the resolution of seeing brandy come to terms with that after four plus years by visiting them realizing that there's nothing you can do similar to how willie comes to terms with the fact that you can't have the cheated one seat having that parallel with that to showcase and to teach the kid but also kind of slightly hit for the adults this you know this sense of vision was really good you see the resolution of them doing the little dance they did as kids to stop bingo from running around like a cheetah which was hilarious by the way bingo running around in the onesie was hilarious but seeing that come together was oh so good and yet they banned giving the burp episode literally literally yeah that's why i have this episode ranked very highly i just love it for those curious it was ranked number 21 which is kind of ironic if you think about it this episode being ranked 21 i mean you know funny number half but like the context of the episode makes it even more hilarious but also hey i'm glad we could agree bluey fist i'm glad we could agree that one season is fantastic i'm glad we could come to agreements with that with that, we move on to number 16, Pass the Parcel. Oh man, was this episode a f***ing doozy to watch. <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna be hard to talk about. Okay, to start off with, let's see, um, <laughs> why am I forgetting his name now at this crucial part, but he is like basically a main character in this episode. <laughs> the start of it annoyed me a bit. I'll just say, it annoyed me as well. It annoyed everyone. Okay, I'm sorry. I need I need to look up his name. What What is, what is, is it Pat? Yeah, it's Pat. Okay. Okay I, okay, I just had to confirm because I was gonna lose my mind when trying to talk about this episode. I'll just say, Pat slash Lucky Dad. The whole arc with this episode involving Pat slash Lucky Dad with the whole pass the parcel thing was very interesting. Let me tell you. Because originally, you know, the original pass the parcel was played, you know, where everyone got something. It seed all of you know, that. And then, you know, Lucky Feed all pissed. Like, hey, back in my day, we didn't do that shit. You're thinking everyone grew up to be a bunch of bunch of pimps or whatever it was that he said and then everyone obviously feels like okay roll eyeballs calm down that but then trying to see what he's at try to then pass that into his own son's fifth birthday party and seeing the reaction of everyone oh my god i swear that episode made me lose five years of my life seeing that whole thing because it was so cringe it was so frustrating it was just Oh man, it was, it was a lot of emotions all at once, that segment, Jesus Christ. And also, they could have ended the episode there, or they could have ended with, you know, Pat deciding, you know what, it's okay. Let the generation play out as it is. And, and if they just ended like that, where Pat learns their lesson, like, hey, it does, you know, this new way of playing isn't half bad, then the episode would have been fine, and it would have been, you know, a good episode of Bluey. Then it continued. And then once they continued, that's where the interesting stuff came in. Because originally then, everyone was like, you know, sad with how it played out. Except for the kid that won. And then when it turns out that the next birthday party, you know, they do the same exact thing because the kid that won wanted to do it that way again. And it seemed to react more positively. And then having that like a butterfly slash domino effect of where then the kids as multiple birthdays started to go on and seeing them want Lucky's dad's rules to play out. All because he decided to twist it up for that one time. It may have been awkward for that one moment, but then seeing that all come around and seeing them actually like it. Dude, it, it blew my mind when that happened. That blew my mind when that happened. Because I could have originally just said where only Pad learned the lesson to, you know, just let people do it as is and it doesn't really matter how people play it. And they still do add that to the episode. But then see that ripple effect of the kids starting to like it and even the parents starting to love it afterwards then after the episode i sat there for a solid five minutes just thinking about that storytelling that they did and how they twisted the narrative like that because that i know i kept saying it but it did blow my mind and for that reason alone that's why i have been ranked so high is because it made me think it made me think about how much a small little thing can have such a ripple effect and the butterfly flex or stomach effect whatever you want to call it and have it continuing on from there on out i loved it personally i know some people might disagree like i think nico is here but for me personally i loved it for that reason no scarcity was ranked number 13 so i'm definitely not alone obviously most of the people that voted to believe us are most likely kids probably right so seeing that they also ranked it pretty high is also really cool to see and hey i'm glad we could come to agreements believe Fest. i once again am glad we could agree on something and all right 
With that, we now move on to number 15, Flat Pack. Oh man. Okay, originally with Flat Pack, obviously, if you just looked at it like at face value, there wouldn't really be much to talk about this episode. But dude, when you dig deep and you really think about this episode, oh my god, does there is okay for those that don't know about this episode in this episode of bluey they're teaching you about i feel like the evolution of like mankind because they you know they go from like different animals species with each like passing minute seeing them then all the way turn to cave dogs and then see you know them like you know god how do i explain this it's kind of hard to explain it in like a short sentence but in like summary they summed up you know like the entire evolution to the mankind within seven minutes that's the best way to describe it and the little small details that added to it with like chili bit saying like oh we made them as if they're like the creators of you know them literally and then see you know in the future they're all built up and then see them well not seeing them seeing Bluey and bingo go their separate ways because they're now the future and then Bluey after seeing bingo all grown up and them separate then going up to up the stairs to where it and Chili are, and that's what it's, you know, she's basically like entering into the afterlife that being hinted at and them sitting up there while bingo is you know going around and stuff and then it being like, oh, this is heaven and all that. Just like, oh god. The storytelling here and how they were able to explain like the entire evolution of mankind within seven minutes. Holy shit, it was good. The fact that we're able to do that is mind blowing. It is. For those that are curious, it was ranked number 41, which I was kind of like kind of surprised by initially, but now thinking about it, this one requires you to like really think about it and to rewatch it a lot for you to truly appreciate the episode. So I can kind of see why it's ranked a little bit lower, but for me personally, I love it so much. And that's why I have it ranked in the top 15. But all right, with that, let's move on to number 14. Parky Bones. Oh man, Parky Bones. Now, I will be honest. Well, that's why I've been doing this entire stream, trying to be honest. God, this is an episode I wish I had when I was like, like starting to enter middle school and starting to enter high school. This was something I wish I had back then because it would have made the process of transitioning that and having that explain that to me. Well, I don't know so much easier, but it would have made the process a lot more bearable in my eyes because for those of you that don't know, in this episode, Louie and Mackenzie at the school beat up with their buddies. And you know, it's all wholesome, fun times. But then, story starts to shift a bit. And if you're a kid, you probably are like, wait, why are the buddies, you know, kind of like, what's the word I'm looking for? Be more friendly than usual. <laughs> to each other and then abandoning Louie and Mackenzie because of it? As a kid, you're probably like questioning it. But if you're a teenager slash adult, and like, if you're the older demographic, you immediately understand, oh, sh it's because they're in love with each other. But seeing the kids, you know, believe because he not understand that, understand it so. Well, it's kind of sad because, you know, they were kind of sad when they felt abandoned. But then see the teacher. Oh my God, why am I now forgetting her name? Why must I forget her name? He literally gets an episode named after her. Calypso. There we go. Jesus. But then seeing Calypso come along and then explaining what starting to turn 12 is like and entering that teenage hood in like middle school and high school teaching that by using the barky boats and the water rising up where it's a little bit low when you're a kid obviously and then as the water builds up it's showcasing that the person is aging 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 until it's like you're 12 or 13 and then all the water comes out rushing fast because that's what teenagehood is like or what the hormones are kicking in is like dude i swear if this is not being like teach in like if, if you know if teachers are not like showing this episode to their kids in like but they're starting to enter middle school or starting to enter high school if they did not show this episode of bluey i would be shocked because this is that showcase there of what calypso was teaching bluey and mckenzie there great teaching by her like holy shit. what a great metaphor what a great way to teach that so that way bluey mckenzie could understand and dude seeing the moment at the end there bluey and her buddy just trying to you know build up the fair garden right the known and seeing bluey you know legitimately care for her buddy the, the buddy teared up, giving the bluey the hug. Oh man, that one almost made me tear up, not gonna lie. He were not almost. This is why I probably don't have him ranked as highly as some of the other episodes, but don't get me wrong, I love Barky Boats, man. I think it's a fantastic episode of Bluey if you have not seen it yet. But for those that are curious as well, this was ranked number 36 of Bluey Fest. You know what? I'm just glad. 
<laughs> I'm just glad that this episode was ranked pretty highly as is. I'm happy about that. Thank you, Gooly Fest, for ranking it at least pretty high. I'm thankful for that. With that, we move on to number 13, Daddy Drop-Off. Okay. Oh, man. I don't have it showcased here because it's spoilers. The original episode stuff, you know, it's pretty fine as is. You know, there's nothing crazy about the episode. But the only reason I have it break so high is because of the ending. And I will be honest, I don't have the ending spoiled here because I honestly God want you to watch the show to experience it yourself. I will spoil it and oh my God, I wish I wasn't spoiled the ending to this episode because holy shit, oh my God. It, I was bawling on the inside when it happened. It just dying in wholesomeness from this episode when that ending happened. Just see the like, how like the little things a parent does can have catastrophic domino effect on what your kids will be and all that. Just seeing that and how history will change because of that. Oh man dude it's it's just great I, I don't want to spoil anything just please watch the episode of yourself if you haven't yet just please watch it that's all i ask those characters were number 77 but honestly i can understand why the only reason i ranked it as high is because of the ending but other than that the ending it was just a fine episode of Louie. yeah but now we move on to number 12 space okay space i feel like might be kind of conflicting one because I feel like if you originally just watched this episode and you only watch it one time, you're probably going to be kind of confused as to what was going on in this episode. But if you really think about this episode and question everything that's going on and really think about it, this episode is f***ing deep. And it tackles something that, again, I don't think this episode or like any TV show would try to con talk about you know like tackle and stuff like that god i cannot speak right now there are plenty of others that have talked about this episode deeply that honestly i think will do a much better job like specifically there's one youtuber i watch i oh god i was just watching these videos today that does a much better job explaining space than i ever could hey i remember who the youtuber was the youtuber i was trying to mention was a youtuber named pugly who makes these like cool video essays on bluey and they're honestly got some of my favorite videos on bluey ever like his video editing and storytelling with those video essays are just fantastic i absolutely love them to bits so yeah that was the youtuber i was trying to mention and you should definitely check out his video on space after this section and then obviously come back to this video afterwards <laughs> all right this is going to be my final time popping in for now hope you enjoyed netflix adaptation super video editing super however you want to call me coming in from time to time but with that let's go ahead and finish this video shall we yeah let's go ahead and do that like specifically there's one youtuber i watch i God, I was just watching these videos today. That does a much better job explaining space than I ever could. So, if you can, go watch his video instead in the YouTube video. I'm gonna have it linked in the top right corner. But yeah, obviously, yeah. But please finish this video first before him. But yeah, if you want, but just... If you really think about this episode, it's really good. And I really, really hope that if you have not seen this episode, or if you watched it just once, then to please give this one a rewatch. Please do. It is fantastic. And for those that are curious, it's ranked number 73, which shocked me, honestly. But then I kind of realized, wait, if you don't really know the context of what's going on in this episode, then you probably would not be able to appreciate it as much because it's left kind of vague, you know, for obvious reasons. But if you do understand, I think you'll really appreciate this episode. But with that, we move on to number 11, and that's Copycat. <sighs> copycat man this episode tackled something that most episodes or just like any tv network in general i feel like would never try to tackle in general i feel like tackling death is very sensitive for obvious reasons because it's death when you die you die it's seen that tackled in bluey holy sh and keep in mind, this was season one. This was before like season two and season three really started to tackle insane issues. But this, this was season one. And yet they tackled this. Honestly, that's not the only reason why I have it ring so high. It's because they did attempt to tackle it. It's because they tackle it in a very, I'll say, I think very mature and fantastic way. Where they don't try to, you know, dumb it down for the kids. Say it has how it is. The little bird died, which is sad to see. And obviously this affects Bluey and Ben and affects everyone and everyone's sad, you know know because of that death because obviously no one wants anyone to die let alone an animal and you know it's just 
Yeah. God, even like talking about it right now is like kind of like making me like emotional a bit as well. But the way of how they resolved it as well, I think is really beautiful in my opinion. Because similar to in space where Mackenzie tackled their anxieties and trauma through play, seeing Bluey as well also tackle not necessarily the trauma, but what happened by doing a make-believe game of it, which from what I understand is how kids will actually like, you know, handle, you know, like trauma, traumatic stuff or stuff they don't completely understand or handle something very scary and sad like this through like make-believe play. See that play out in Bluey? It leaves me speechless, honestly, with how mature this show can be when it's, you know, originally just made for kids. Even though it's made for kids, this episode tackles something that I feel like sometimes even like some adult shows would never want to like talk about or tackle but here they do it expertly and i love it and which is why it kind of makes me like contemplate here because at least for me personally it was kind of hard to decide between like space and copycat which one to rank higher because in my mind they're both perfectly in sync good like not one is better than the other but obviously i had to so like <laughs> oh god, but I'm not stuck against myself. Say that out loud. Space and copycat to me are like very similar with how they taught the lesson, how, how this episode play out. So like, mm, I don't know. I'm sick of guessing myself now. Like, should space be ranked higher? Should copycat be ranked? Should copycat still be ranked higher? I don't know. I mean, okay. But honestly, these two could be switched around easily. These two episodes could be easily switched out with each other and I would have agreed with you regardless but to me I think the only reason I rank copycat just a little bit higher is because with this episode you're really able to understand what's going on whereas with space it's kind of harder to understand but it's not me trying to like try to diss space obviously that's just my personal opinion <laughs> you know what maybe I should just shut the f up and move on before I possibly say something even more controversial <laughs> after watching this episode I knew the show would go in different directions oh absolutely it would and for those that are Curious, it was ranked number 79 on Bluey Fest. <laughs> I mean, me personally, I disagree with that ranking. I think it should be ranked way f***ing higher. But you know what? I'm just glad this episode was ranked highly as is. Or at least it was on the Bluey Fest list as is. Because if it wasn't on the list, that would have threw a curveball on me. It definitely would have. Personally, number 11 to 12 for Copyright Series, it was their first time going for a different direction and they did it excellent. That is true though. Yeah, that is true. Copycat was the first episode to create that domino effect that would then lead to them actually more since the top critics in season two and three. So that is also something to consider. That is true. But all right, that we're moving on to the top 10. We're at the top 10. This is crazy. With number 10 on the list, dance mode. Oh man, I mean, dance mode is just great. We get the funny moments of, you know, just see, <laughs> see the family dance around to, you know, the music and, you know, possibly awkward or, as some would argue it, fantastic scenarios. And then seeing Bean Bingo constantly, you know, having what she wants taken away from her because of her outside voice sometimes stop being her inside voice that was an interesting dynamic throughout the entire episode and like you no know, seeing it all then come to an end where with the yes or no button bingo is finally able to say what she really thinks using the buttons of yes and no to her parents and bluey she really thinks and you know it's just like i'm really glad they were then able to understand bingo's case and hopefully in the future they don't do this to bingo from now on but did see them make up for it it's what I argue one of the most iconic scenes in Bluey where you know they get together at that spot with the composer by the way coming in as a little cameo playing the music and it all you know coming together being like ladies and gentlemen I'm doing this for my kids entering dance mode and then see them all dance around having a fantastic fun time oh man that moment of Bluey I'm never gonna forget it's so good it's so iconic and for that reason alone it goes to the top 10 for that reason. It's such a fantastic episode of Bluey, hands down. For those curious, it was ranked number seven. But hey, I'm, a, I'm agreeing with. Thank you, Bluey Fest, for agreeing with me once more. But with that, we move on to number nine on this list. Bike. Oh my god, dude. Bike is so good. Because here's the thing, right? I don't know about you guys. 
But as a kid showed beautifully in this episode, seeing the kids struggle and usually wanting stuff straight away. I don't know about you guys, but for me, that was me as a kid. I just wanted things to go my way straight away as well. And when things you know, were not going my way really, I thought it was not fair at all, like the kids in this episode. So automatically, it was automatically relatable. But then once, you know, all the kids are having their moment of anger and sadness, and just contemplating like, am I going to be able to do? And eventually, you would think, you know, that would be a thing for the parents to come in and be like, you know what, maybe I'll just come in and help my child here. But then, like, in a showcase, maybe taking a step back and slaying the kids figured out on their own. And then seeing all the creative ways of them being able to resolve their, you know, dilemmas. Look with Muffin playing on the backpack by doing it sideways? Is that what it is? I know exactly. Which, fun fact, was actually based on something in real life that the creator of the show actually witnessed when they were at the park. And they ran it into the episode there you go and see you know i believe it was winnie now rest of being able to get on the monkey bars and seeing their resolution of it by you know typing the like pole instead and then grabbing on the monkey bars was really cool and as all this going on the music's blowing up as seeing everyone you know having their resolutions work and feeling joyous and proud of them it's oh my god and then of course you know with bingo being able to finally drink her water and stay hydrated even though honestly i will admit seeing the amount of water that was wasted <laughs> At that moment, kind of triggered me a little bit, kind of a little bit, but hey, at least Bingo was able to say hydrate. That I am happy with. At least he was able to say hydrate. And then seeing all of that come together, where Bully understands and is then willing to get back on the bike and then trying to face, trying to ride their bike head on. Oh my god, dude. It was just like the perfect little bow to end the episode off. It was beautiful. I love this episode a bit because of that. There we go. And for those that are curious, it was ranked number 51 of Bully Fest. Well, Personally, I do think that this episode should be ranked a lot higher. But at the same time, I'm not mad with this ranking, you know. It could have been a whole lot worse with this ranking. A whole lot worse. For bouncing the hearts a lot of that, oh, you will. Especially with number 8 here. But speaking of number 8, number 8 on this list, DRAGON! Like I said with Escape, man, the visuals and visuals in Escape were great. The dead game, Dragon, and all they've seen that Artel called back with a full vengeance, but also see the all other art styles of Bandit and Jilly and Bingo. Oh man, it was so glorious! Because seeing the different art styles represent their different art journeys, but Bingo obviously being five years old, being a little chaotic gremlin. Louis, you know, a little bit better than Bingo's with adding the outlines, but still kind of seen as if a kid was drawing it. And then Bandit's, you know, having that like black and white coloring, showcasing that even though, you know, he's much older than the kids, obviously, his art style is, you know, not the best because he gave up a drawing. I did see Jilly's art style, you know, looks so clean and good because she kept practicing. Oh my god, the little details of that, I f***ing, I f***ing love, dude. Oh my god. Remember when we saw the first, we were screaming. Oh, we were. Trust me. For those that don't know, me and Nika watched all of, like, the 12 episodes that released onto Disney Plus recently back to back. And when we saw that the art style was coming back, me and Nika were screaming to our hearts to light because we knew, like, oh, shit, this episode's gonna be good. And, you know, Oh my god, this is this is gonna be heartbreaking. But seeing the reason why, you know, Bandits and Chili's art styles are completely different is because with Bandit, he was demotivated because no one really like gave him motivation to draw and that's why he quit. But when compared to Chili, who was not only well obviously encouraged to, and that's why her art style's so good. But then seeing Chili's mom, Louie's grandma come in for the first time in like if anything of Bluey, just to see that she was a caring mother and that she encouraged Chili man to continue her passion. That's why her art style looks as good as this. And then having that will be the catalyst to then see Bluey, you know, be able to have the courage to then draw the dragon at the very end of the episode. Because thanks to what Chili's mom said to Chili, Chili's now saying the same thing to Bluey and Oh my god! It's just it's just fantastic, man. This episode, man, it's just, it's good, man. This episode is just f***ing fantastic. If you have not watched this episode, man, please do. It is so good. So good. For those viewers, it was ranked number 23. Not in the top 10, unfortunately, but hey. I'm just glad it's ranked very highly as this. That I, that I can die happy with. But then let's move on to number 7 on this list. Which number 7 is Rain. I've said it a lot. 
throughout this entire stream that I love creative storytelling in any sort of medium ever. And this is a perfect example of that creative storytelling. Because for Delsa Del Del in this episode, they do not speak a word. The only time they speak words in this episode is if, like at the first few seconds when they're saying bye to Bingo and Bandit. Other than that, they say no words in this episode and it's just god how do i put this all the episode is is just bluey playing in the rain and trying to stop the rain from going through their driveway but the little things they added in were bluey's trying to grab the different stuff and causing havoc to jilly who's just trying to you know keep her house clean keep in mind this is all done with zero dialogue not a word is said it's just the music playing instead and it just lets the music and the visuals tell the story and Oh man, I did not cry in this episode, but oh man, I wanted to cry because it was it was just a beautiful episode, man. It's just beautiful. It's a work of art, honestly, this episode. This episode is just a work of art, and I love it. I absolutely love it because of the fact that it is a work of art. And with that, for those that are curious, it was ranked number eight! Literally, once again, only one away from us completely in sync in the same wavelength in agreements with Bully Fest. But honestly, I'm glad me and Bleepest could agree this much that this episode is a masterpiece and it's a true work of art. I am so glad that me and Bleepest could agree. All of Australia, technically, we agree with that. That I am happy with. Thank you for agreeing with me, Bleepest. It's much appreciated. And number six, we have Cricket. Oh my god, Cricket. Do I really need to say why this episode is so good? I mean, technically I will, obviously, because, you know, it's Cricket. And I obviously want to talk about Cricket. But if I must, I guess I'll talk about Cricket, even though I definitely don't want to. <laughs> I mean, Cricket Man, the storytelling in Cricket Man is just so good. Because apparently this episode was actually originally worked on in season one. It took them three seasons to be able to work to finish this episode. And you can clearly tell it is because the storytelling and everything that was added into Cricket is beautiful. It's fantastic. Because seeing Rusty, seeing where he came from, and seeing, you know, how everything in his life affected his ability to play Cricket in positive ways from, you know, the tree stumps when he would visit Jack and Jack's friends and all, which was so cute, by the way. And of course, seeing how Rusty didn't want to disturb his mom, so then he learns the sideways tactic, just so he would disturb his mom and then see words come out of my mouth please to explain cricket but also with cricket see him play with the teenagers and originally be kind of like kind of like iffy about it and being scared too you know obviously because they were playing like real life cricket and that was scary as hell but seeing it all come together with a letter that he got from his dad the representation of parents in the army no less which is pretty cool and also talking to rusty through that letter basically entire episode kind of being like a lesson to kind of like face your fears you know be brave and all that because then it'll have a ripple effect and be able to face everything head on you know you know those type of lessons it was pretty sweet but then also i need a little bit of details of seeing rusty being a great older brother to his little sister and giving her the chance to catch the ball to win and then obviously of course it all ending and the music welling up with Rusty, you know, then kind of being like transported to like the future of sorts. And then high fiving his future stuff, playing the actual cricket game because he just loves cricket that much. And the entire episode kind of showcasing why some people love cricket is because it brings them back to their families or like links them back to their families. It's just, there's a lot to say about cricket, man, and I love it, man. I love it. Obviously, there's, well, not better people. There's obviously others that explain why cricket is so good, much better. I just love cricket man i love cricket and i hope you can clearly understand why i do love it so much for those that are curious it was ranked number number one honestly i'm not shocked cricket is fantastic for me personally i didn't rank it as highly because the upper episodes in the top five made me cry whereas cricket it didn't which is why i don't have him ranked in the top five but it's a beautiful and fantastic episode of blue do not get me wrong i love cricket a bit even as an australian that doesn't understand some of the australian culture now I still love this episode a bit, do not get me wrong. Even a filthy American like myself can understand blue sometimes.
But with that chat, I have something to admit to you guys. I have been lying to you this entire time. This is actually where S tier ends and where we will get our hyper web water rank for a second because I added a brand new ranking and instead we have the five SS tiers are the episodes that made me tear up and made me feel stuff that no other episode of like television in general or media has ever made me feel and for that reason and that reason alone the top five get their own ranking that being the SS tier because these are the best of the best episodes of Bluey that in my mind deserve much more recognition and some of them kind of don't get and some of them rightfully deserve to get. I think our top five is going to be very interesting. But first, water break time. Don't forget to stay hydrated. <laughs> There we go. I want to make sure I drink a lot so I can be fully ready to talk about the top five. Look at that. Here are the top five SS tiers. Starting out at number five. Bumpy and the wise old wolfhound. Now, I will admit, I may be a bit biased with this episode because of my, like, understanding of, like, video editing and, like, what it takes to make a good video or, like, what it takes to make a movie and all that because of my knowledge of, like, film and what it takes to make something. I may be biased in that regard. But this episode, man, holy sh**. This episode is just hilarious, hands down. When I was watching this with my, like, with one of my friends, John, when I originally showed this episode, he did not know what to think originally. Everything was played out as it was. And dude, all of us were just laughing our asses off at the jokes made in this episode. Because let me tell you, obviously there's some funny jokes that go on throughout this episode with, like, Muffin smashing the vase and, you know, socks being a little gremlin biting everything they touch and all that. But also seeing the bunch of, like, meta references i want to say of like the little cuts they would make in between and also seeing like the little bloopers they would have which would lead to absolutely glorious faces like louis here just contemplate everything contemplate their entire existence oh my god it was hilarious like seeing the set you know be destroyed when bully was trying to give a monologue and see the whole editing with uh, Trixie came into screen and the entire screen made me feel like I was high for a moment. Yeah, just for the most part, I love this episode because of, you know, the better jokes with like making like a whole movie and stuff like that. That for me personally, I loved and thought was hilarious. Same with John. But then also with this episode, this was the first one to make me tear up. When I heard like this show made people tear up, I was expecting it to happen like in like season two or three. I wasn't expecting it in season one, man. But see the lesson of like, hey, you can't really do anything if you're sick because it just happens. And then Bluey and everyone tried to teach that to be go through the whole deal and game they played together. Oh my God, dude, it got me. It caught me off guard and I started tearing up. This episode was making me start to cry and it was making me question what the f I was doing because this was just season one. It was making me tear up. What the f And yeah, just this episode in general, I just absolutely adore and I love to bits. Chad is not making that easy with the fart jokes they are adding in right now. Please ignore them. <laughs> trying to ruin this moment I'm trying to have. But yeah, just this episode, man. It's just top five for me this episode. I absolutely adore it. And for those curious, it was ranked number 24. I'm happy, you know, it was ranked pretty highly at least. All right, with that, let's move on to number four on this list, which is camping. Oh my god, the wholesomeness of camping, man. It It's on another level, the wholesomeness of camping. Because seeing Bluey and Bingo go on a camping trip, you know, which would be like a regular episode of Bluey, just them going camping, you know, nothing too crazy. But then adding that story in of John Luke, who's fantastic, by the way. I love John Luke the bits. And seeing it all play out where originally, you know, you would think, oh, maybe they won't get along because they're speaking different languages. No, bitch! They are getting along and they're playing together and it's incredibly wholesome how they work together and play along despite, you know, the different languages being a barrier, but they're not letting that deteriorate them and they're getting along and playing along and it's just so yeah! And then originally that sad moment where John Luke has to leave and you know Bluey's upset because that means you know their friend is gone. Which is you know incredibly upsetting. It's sad. You know it's 
it's sad. But you know, Chili explained to Blue, like, hey, sometimes some special people come into our lives and then, you know, they leave. Be glad that, you know, they did come because they left the positive moment in your life. But it's honestly incredibly wholesome because I don't know you guys, but I've had this moment before. In elementary school, I had a friend named John and I don't know what happened to him, but after like a couple of years in elementary school, he disappeared without a trace and I still don't know to this day what happened to him. But he was like the John Luke to me and I appreciate his presence nonetheless. And then it could have ended the episode there and it would have been happy. But then they just had to end the episode off so freaking wholesomely for Bluey, much older now. I believe in their like tweens or teen years now. Reading the bug next to the tree that they originally planted. And then freaking John Luke coming in and be like, hi, Bluey, and then reuniting again after so long. Oh my god, not only do I love it, but it absolutely broke me. The wholesomeness from this episode, man, it f***ing broke me. And yeah, this, this episode is just beautiful, man. It's ranked number four for a reason. I love this episode. A lot of people also love this episode, and it's very clear to see why. It's just so f***ing good. Yeah, it got me too. Trust me, it got me. Oh yeah, and here's a fun fact for you guys that don't know but in like translations when they would like translate into different languages they actually they switched the language i forget what language john luke was speaking in like the english stuff but in like i believe it was like the french stuff i think don't quote me on that but in a different dub of the show they actually have john luke speak english john luke speaking in french He's then speaking English in the French stuff, which is just such a small detail. But I absolutely love that small detail, the bits, man. That small detail, leaving, like changing everything is just so wholesome. And for those that are curious, it was ranked number six. Which, hey, pretty close to my ranking. So you know what? I'm glad we could come to agreement, Spoolyfest. I'm glad we could come to agreement that this episode is fantastic. I'm glad we could. And with that, we move on to the next episode. And number three baby race now i'll be honest i don't really like babies all that much just for me personally i don't really like them that much but oh man baby race dude holy shit, it got to me because you know seeing chili originally you know being proud of bluey for you know be able to sit up i believe but her accidentally kind of taking too much pride to it and then trying to turn everything into a race afterwards i don't know how relatable that is to you guys to me it's also not really that relatable but i just thought it was a really interesting story they were telling here but you know the mother trying hard to like impress the others when you know next reality it doesn't really matter and seeing her upset you know that bluey is trying to run their own race see it all that was kind of sad to see and then i think it was chloe's mom right then came in to you know talk to chili about everything and you know with her experience with her being above her of so many kids it did just her just reaching out to you know chili and just going to her you're doing great holy shit. if you were not crying in that moment then you are soulless i'm sorry but you just are soulless man like let me tell you, my mother, who has not seen the show, by the way, is still going to be heading to, like, a hospital-like area. She's fine, by the way, but she just wants to, like, get some stuff done, and she's going to be stuck in the hospital for a couple of days. And she was asking me to recommend some, like, shows for her to watch while she's stuck in the hospital. I'm going to recommend her baby face, or not baby face, baby race, just to see what her reaction is to this episode. Because I'm willing to bet she's going to bawl her eyes out when she watches this episode. And I'll add, like, in a little, like, something here here and post if you know she actually does yeah and then not only that but then see you know Julie decides to you know to run her own race and all and you know they could have just edited it there and it would have been a great episode of bluey but god they just had to end that extra little moment of when bluey is then able to as a baby finally start walking for the first time in the kitchen and Julie being all shocked and all right and happy that you know bluey's walking and all that and then bingo's freaking dialogue at the end it's just like Maybe she just saw something you she really wanted or loved man. Oh my god! Holy s I was bawling. Okay, well not actually bawling, I was tearing up, but oh my god, the if it got me again. If you do not cry in this episode, you are fing soulless. Honest to God, if you did not cry in this episode of Bluey, you are soulless. I am sorry, but you are. Just saying, bro, fan girl in here. No, I'm I'm cry girly. What are you talking about? I'm cry girly. I was curious, it was ranked number two. So honestly, if I switched this out with what I have at number two, we would have been perfectly in sync with Bluey Fest. But honestly, 
even despite that, I'm still glad me and Bullyfest could agree with each other once more that this episode is just fantastic. It's just so good. But with that, we now move on to number two on this list. Sleepy time. Okay, do I even need to explain why this episode is just a masterpiece? It's one of the greatest episodes of just like television. Not even just like Bluey, but just in television. Do I even need to explain why this episode is so good? Why Sleepy Time is so good? Because I feel like we all know why this episode is so good. We all know why Sleepy Time is such a masterpiece of television. Honestly, words, my words were probably not describing up how much I love this episode, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna attempt. I mean, first off, the animation. Oh my god, the animation in this episode. It was like visual eye candy, man. I just want to like inject <laughs> everything about the animation into my brain, man. The colors, the fluidity of everything was just so memorizing, colorful, and just Oh, it was... God, I loved it. Let's see. Secondly, the music. Oh my f***ing God, the music. Usually the music in Bluey is fantastic. I mean, I think we all know that. But in this episode, man, they went all f***ing out of the music with like orchestras and everything. Like, they went all out on this episode for no f***ing reason. And it slaps hard. It slapped harder than Bingo was slapping Bandit when she was asleep at, uh, at that planet. And then, of course... Speaking of being a sloppy bandit, the comedy episode was on a different level, man. Seeing everything like perfectly entwined with each other with the editing, which the editing, by the way, was suburban this episode. It was fantastic. But the jokes in this episode laid it every single time. It got me cackling so hard throughout the duration of all of it. But yet, despite all of that, obviously, another great thing about this episode is just the emotional and mature moments that stepped in. But you know, Bingo has to let go of her, her little plushie because she wants to, you know, be a big girl now. And obviously her being very upset about that. And then freaking Chili comes in as the sun. The music then swells up. Bingo accepts all of them. She's like, I have to go now. I'm a big girl now, you know, and all that. The music swelled up and, you know, Chili's like, just remember that I'll always be here for you because I love you. And then Bingo's tail wagging and it's just like, oh my god, I'm melting! melting in all the mess and the music continuing to swell because we see the end of it all coming together you know oh my god with bluey and bandit sleeping nicely all sucked up together chili you know getting all better self of all the crazy antics that happened Miku getting the good sides rest together oh my god God. The upper episodes, you know, you know, they definitely made me tear, but this is the one that like actually legitimately broke me and got tears like running down my face when I watched it. This episode is just a masterpiece of television in general, man. If you have not watched Bully yet, please at least give this episode a shot because it is on a different f***ing level. It really is. I also have to be honest, it's not my favorite favorite episode of Bluey. This is not my favorite episode of Bluey. It's instead... Well, actually, first off, let me just clarify. For those curious, it was ranked number four. Personally, I think it should be ranked at least top three. But you know what? I'm glad it's ranked highly as is because it deserves that high ranking. I'm glad for that. While Sleepy Time is glorious, and I won't lie, is the best episode of Bluey ever made. Hands down, like that is clear as day. For me, it's not my favorite episode of Bluey of all time. That instead goes... For a different emoji. Not emoji. I see the stuff that Josh is doing and it's ruining the moment. I'm trying to have a serious moment there. And Josh is like, hey, clap it up. But instead, that number one ranking and the best episode of Bluey, well, maybe not the best, but my personal favorite episode of Bluey, in my opinion, and the one that I have ranked as my top one favorite Bluey episode of all time. That episode is army army is my all-time favorite episode of bluey for one reason and one reason only with the other episodes you know they were great they were fantastic you know somehow were even greater than what television sometimes has to offer but this episode 
This is the episode that made me feel seen. I should probably give some context for this one. For those that don't know, I'm neurodivergent. I know how f***ing obvious the guy that's, you know, been sessing over Bluey for how many long minutes is the guy that's neurodivergent. I know, how shocking. But he that aside, I won't say which ones for obvious reasons because I want to eventually talk about that when I'm ready. In the day and age where it feels like there is very little sometimes at least sometimes it feels like there's very little good representation of neurodivergent people in media and stuff like what was it like sia's freaking like music movie or something like that which was horrible and stuff like the good doctor which i admit is not really good representation at all but seed army do honestly one of the best like representations of the other virgin people. So the other episodes, you know, they're great. But with this episode make me feel seen, it was good to be highly ranked. Because I do watch a lot and consume a lot of media, but rarely do I ever feel seen. And this was the episode that made me feel seen. And see the great representation with, you know, Dex either stimming or not being able to sit still a lot in the car. Him having the hard time be able to try to like memorize stuff. Except when he was like having fun, when he was having fun, he was able to excel at what he was doing, which was incredibly wholesome and the message of like <laughs> god i might actually tear up while trying to explain this the overall message of like even despite you know your differences if you're being neither you know, the virgin or anything like that and not having them treat any differently and then sometimes being seen as a great thing for him and even when you know he acknowledges that you know that there's something quote unquote wrong with him which let's be honest there was nothing Thing ever wrong with him in the first place because it's Jack and Jack we stand him and then Rusty you know coming in with, well you're really good at playing army I was maybe like tearing up on the outside but on the inside man there was a flood there was there was a flood inside my body man when I finished this episode man and we had to like call the fire department to help to clean out the flood that was happening in my body from my heart to crying their eyes out yeah overall while army may not be like the best episode of Bluey ever made and while well, it may not honestly be one of the greatest episodes of Bluey of all time. Because if it being honest, if it wasn't for, you know, everything, I probably would have ranked it like maybe like lower high A tier. But because of how, I don't know if I would say perfect, but how great representation they did Jack here in a day and age where it sometimes does feel like there's not good representation. I, I have, it is my favorite episode for that reason. It is my favorite episode of Bluey for that reason. And that reason alone. I don't care what anyone thinks. This is my favorite episode. And it's gonna stay that way for all the time. I will be continuing to watch Bully from here on out. Is it more of a personal hot take for you? Kinda, yeah. Because for those that don't know, it was ranked number 11. Which kinda makes me a bit sad that it didn't make it in the top 10. Like, personally, I would have switched out Bin 9 that was ranked number 10 with Army here, and then I would have been happy with the ranking. But the fact that it didn't make top 10 makes me sad, but you know what? I'll just appreciate it in my Nero Divergent corner. And if anyone that wants to appreciate the episode wants to join me, they're happy to do so. Yeah, just give me a moment after like talking about all of that. Jesus Christ, but a lot of emotions there. I didn't cry. I almost did though. Yeah, with that, that concludes my ranking of every episode of Bluey ever made on a tier list. Which for those that are curious, this is the entire list. Now there is some inconsistencies with this tier list because while well, when I did originally screenshot it, I did move some stuff around in the Google site presentation. So while this tier list may not be entirely 100% accurate, it is like pretty accurate to my actual ranking. Yeah, there you go. It's my entire ranking of Bluey. But you know what here? We didn't ask, you know, Bluey again here what they thought. Bluey fun. Overall, what do you think of my rankings for this episode? Bluey, what the f***? You can't say that shit. You're only seven years old. Why are you saying the horrible cuss words and shit? What the f***? Ignoring the fact that I just need to say a bunch of cuss words there. Bluey, what the f***? Why'd you say that shit? That's horrible, man. Please do not say that stuff ever again. <laughs> oh my god, that's gonna be fun to edit in post. <laughs>
But all right. With that chat, that also concludes the stream. Can you believe it? We finally, you know, got here. <laughs> see, I told you, see, see, out of my ears. Okay, sus, you guys, sus. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for joining me on this journey. Even if you were only here for just a minute, even if you were only here for one stream, or if you were somehow here for all 150 episodes i sincerely thank you for watching all the way to the end and i do hope that by me doing this i get to do more rankings like this in the future because i would love to do more stuff like this with like potentially has been hotel five nights freddy's the owl house you know just like there's a bunch of stuff i want to do ranking stuff through this like google slide presentation formula or format sorry and i would love to do more stuff like this but the only way i know you guys like this is unironically by smashing that subscribe button to stay hydrated that's the only way i know that you guys like this stuff well besides for hitting the like button of course as well but you know <laughs> yeah if you did enjoy this stream or the vod or the video however you consume this then please Slurp that subscribe button right now to stay hydrated. But I know that you want to see more and that you'll be able to be here when I do this once again. With that, I am going to be ending the stream here. Again, thank you to everyone that came out. I very much appreciate it. First, you bully for the stuff you said that's going to get me demonetized. And as always, I will be seeing you in the next cartoon. Goodbye, everyone!